<laughs> let's let's put that to the test as well. And how many games can you play? <laughs> well, when I when, when I did the thing where I did the, uh, I hand wrote everything. We had it was 24 hours of useless video on YouTube servers. Just uh -huh. they, they mined all that silicon to make those hard drives, and I just wasted all of it with my nonsense. Uh, we are here with, uh, I am David Malky, uh, creator of Machine Death Game, uh, along with here with uh, Chris Straub. Uh, I'm in Los Angeles, Chris is in Seattle. Um, Chris, how are you uh, this evening? I'm great. I'm trying to, I'm trying to fight the sun, as, as we often do here in Seattle. Uh, I'm looking forward to about 20 minutes, uh, just a, a hot beam of light is going to blind me, and we can see if I can play this game completely blind. It's going to be the best. It's going to be, like, that's the added challenge that you have volunteered for, so I've, I, I'm very <laughs> grateful to you for taking that upon yourself as, uh, you, the game is too easy otherwise, without an added physical element. Right, I, bring it on, is what I say. Have you ever tried to play this game while balancing on a giant rubber ball? No, I do not have one of those yet. Um... Can you, if you were to guess, uh, just to suppose, if there's any advantage, disadvantage to that gameplay-wise, what would be your supposition? Uh, I'm worried that it might affect the dice roll. It might al also affect your ability to catch the coin. And I'm also worried that it veers into a fetishistic territory. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Uh, well, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely eat up a lot of time so that the light will come faster so that your performance will be... <laughs> right, we can't start until, I'm, until I can't see. Uh, we're also joined here today by Nate Mann coming from uh, Australia. Uh, thanks for joining us, Nate. It's so, so, so great to see you. Thank you. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing Machine of Death. So Nate was one of our Kickstarter backers, and uh, he got the tier called Contact, which is uh, to play the game with me and Chris. And so here we are. And uh, Nate has his copy there in Australia. I've got a copy here in Los Angeles. And uh, it's going to be great. So, Machine of Death, of course, the game of creative assassination. We're going to murder some people in interesting and creative ways. I am going to take on the role of playing the chief. And uh, Chris and Nate, you guys are going to be our uh, crew of assassins. And we're going to rely on you to, to bring the reign of terror of these imaginary people to a swift and, and violent end. I hope we can count on you for that. Well, I love death, and I love machines, so it seems like a perfect fit for this guy right here. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, all right, to get started, we're going to build some targets. So I'm going to read uh, some prompts, and I'm going to want you guys to go ahead and give me uh, some information. This is uh, how all intelligence is gathered worldwide, is by just reading off things from a book. Uh, this is a secret uh, of methods that uh, we're going to reveal here, first time on the Machine of Death uh, game. What um, I like about it is that there, are, of course, there's so many people in the world that it is going to be correct. It's like right. a million monkeys, million typewriters. And those are the people who are going to die. Yeah. <laughs> just imagine if a cruise missile just hits somebody because uh, randomly, uh, every every single character in this in this uh, game manual, this uh, uh, prompt a, a list of table, uh, is probably describes an actual human being in fair detail. So. This is the Snowden documents hard copy. <laughs> exactly, <Yeah>. exactly. <laughs> and so, I'm sure that there's somebody, statistically speaking, among the 10,000 people who backed the game, you got a copy of this, and maybe the name is incorrect, but then they look at the description and says, wait a minute, likes bathing in chocolate, thinks aliens are watching, currently in a subway car, this is creepy, how well it describes me. That's, that's my uncle, so <laughs> I'm, I'm a little nervous, yeah. Well, maybe... Uh, how do you like your uncle? Is he a good guy or got some problems? I, I think he deserves to die, honestly, if I could be frank. So let's find a way. I mean, this may, we may solve some problems here tonight. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get from you guys. Uh, you can just shout them out. Uh, give me any, any name of a human being. Uh, Frank. No. Uh, Frank. What was the second part? I said no, because I realized Chris just said he's going to be Frank, so, you know. No, I, so what I've written down is first name Frank, <laughs> uh, surname No, N-O-H. Yes. Excellent. So uh, this, uh, this sounds like a Bond villain. Um, <laughs> Instead of doctor, it's just Frank. He didn't go to school. He <laughs> <laughs> no. didn't pass medical school. Yeah. Just missed him. Uh, Mr. No. Uh, all right, Frank No um, loves eating what? Oh, he loves he loves chips, just like potato he loves chips. 
chips, potato chips. chips. Are, we, are we talking like American chips or like uh, British hot chips? That's a great question. I'm uh, not, I'm I thought chips come a potato, so that could be either. Well, I'm, st okay. I'm going to go American. We need to think about this. It's going to be a crispy chip that's in a okay. bag. Okay. All right, so yeah. it's crisps. Put parentheses yeah. crisps. Okay, I mean... All right, um, consulting, the, uh, consulting the Intel uh, the booklet here. Um, so that's, his, that's something we know that he likes. Now we've got to figure out something that's going to be his weakness. Okay. Uh, he will only drink... Oh, um, okay. So he's gonna be uh, so crisps. They're pretty salty. He's gonna gonna have to be something little that'll hydrate him because uh, you know you can. So it can't be can't be a sugary drink. I don't know. Like, Frank might be a iced tea. He might do it. Uh, sorry, what was it? Tea? Yeah, iced yeah, tea. Like a, like an iced tea. Iced tea. All right. Iced tea. We've got some water content. I feel like that's going to hydrate him sufficiently, but um, mm -hmm. no other beverage. But without the caffeine, yeah. He's going to satisfy. <laughs> uh, all right, so now our final uh, piece of intel, the coordinates. He is currently camping in a remote what? A <laughs> uh, bus stop. He's camping in a <laughs> bus stop. I like it. I like it. In a remote... Bus stop. The bus has such a long schedule <laughs> that he's got to actually be there for three days, and he's actually camped. It's a yeah, it's a very infrequent uh, uh, line. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is one of our targets. We're gonna make three more. Uh, another name of a person. Oh, I'll go first this time. It's it's Jeff. Jeff. Jeff Dodge. Dodge. Yeah. Jeff Dodge. Uh, Jeff Dodge, um, he is highly attracted to what? Bees. Bees. Highly attracted to bees. He's a weird man. That's why he could, you know, he's, he's an atheist. Some would say why he, that, that is why he deserves to die. I mean, we wouldn't be so crass as to say that. Um, he, oh, oh, no. It's, well, it's, it's nothing, you know. Untoward. He's, he's he's got a passion. He just uh, yeah. He's he's attracted to the idea of bees. Yes. Uh, oh, also, you know. the feel of them and the touch of them and just <laughs> their little tiny wings grazing his skin. Right. They actually <laughs> raise the temperature a little bit. It's yeah. It's it it's it's really it, it's almost like if angels were real, what angels would feel like on your skin. If they were very small and hated you, yes. Um, <laughs> but he hates the feel of. Oh gosh, you know what? He loves bees and he hates steam. Oh. He hates the feel okay. of steam. <laughs> if he's got a cold, that cold lasts because he refuses to like boil water, get the humidity up in there. No vapor rub for this guy. No, sir. Hates the feel of steam. Doesn't like it. His skin gets all prickly. <laughs> I feel uh, like currently, that. he is. Uh, Walking the floor of a blank factory. Oh, I'm gonna say almond. Almond factory, like like okay. like a nut. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he won a prize and he's getting the tour. <laughs> well, he, he could be a bee expert that they've brought in to uh, to to uh, consult on the uh, on the, the bee disappearance issue. Oh, and there are, we can't produce enough almonds. I see. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, almonds are highly pollinatable. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we've got two so far, but the, the murder's just getting started. Uh, third uh, person's name, any name at all. Uh, what about Niles? Niles. Oh, yeah. Name? we got to get rid of him. And surname? I'll give you... Black? I'll, I'll give you this one. Wait, sorry, what did you say, Chris? Black? I know you said black. black. Niles Black. Niles black. Black. That sounds like a Harry Potter character. Uh, <laughs> he he currently is, or sorry, his intel. He is an Olympic level sportsman of some sort. Oh, I see. He's an Olympic level. Uh, uh, I was gonna say a commenter. <laughs> <laughs> he works his way up. So he's a. Uh, oh yeah. 
you know, he can't just be any old is he, you know, like, is he like a sportscaster? Yeah, he's in the booth. Yeah, okay, yeah. What does he do the rest of the year in between games? I don't know. You know, uh, uh, I hope... Spelling bees, spelling pie eating contests. He any, annoys people at movie theaters. <laughs> any place there's somebody doing something that seems fun, he's there to talk about what is happening. Because yeah. Because... It's a, it's a, it gives him a vicarious thrill of some sort. He may be the first to comment his own death. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to have a lot to say about this. I, I, I can predict it somehow. Um, he is allergic to... Ooh. Could be anything. Red wine? Red wine. Okay, that's good. Useful. Allergic to red wine. And currently, he is in line at the... Airport. Uh, at the airport. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. That's a good venue. In line at the airport. Great. Rich. rich. Uh, so we've got uh, Niles Black here. It's number three. All right, one more. One more name. And I feel like we've got three men. Let's get a woman. Okay. Um, I feel bad about killing women, though. This is this is my problem. Well, you should. <laughs> you should. That, feel bad I mean, about anybody. Ben, that's gentlemanly yeah. of you, but statistically <laughs> unlikely. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, her name is Valencia. Valencia. Oh, it's not It's a fancy name. And uh, surname. Oh, uh, Dolphs. Dolphs? Dolphs, like Dolph Lundgren, but... So I have the DHS. There you go. <laughs> Great. Easy. Easy peasy. Uh, currently, uh, she is... Oh, she loves making... What? Uh, oh, she's like an artisanal bookbinder. Artisanal Ooh. bookbinder. So, like, like, there's leather work involved. Right, someone has a wedding album or something, they come to her for that. Right. You know, I was just watching a bunch of videos uh, about that for a pro another a different project. It's a really, really elaborate art. Um, so, she has no sense of what? <laughs> style. No sense of style. <laughs> Sure, she's she's shut in all day. She's got her books. <laughs> it's not important. Uh, and yeah, she's she's got her own her own uh, unique way of, of of dressing herself. Especially if she has a workshop attached to her house, she doesn't need to go outside. So she just wears she dresses for comfort. I right. think I think it largely involves important. aprons as well. But you know, a lot of utility. I feel like there's a lot of. Uh, yeah, like a leather apron is probably like really mm. involved in her wardrobe. Right. It was the first thing she she bound was herself. <laughs> <laughs> um, she is currently strapped into a <laughs> a lawn chair. She's strapped into a lawn chair. And I'll tell you why. Uh, because <laughs> she knows she needs her relaxation time. She's been stressed. But she keeps remembering stuff she had to do and getting back up. So this time she tied herself to that lawn chair so she can have a, a good sit. It's an enforced relaxation. Yes. Well, well, she could be agoraphobic, so, you know, it's, it's, it's part of her therapy. It's very grounding. Yeah, that's true. So she's trying to, to improve herself. And, and, you know, I think it's fundamentally the same thing as, like, trying to, like, trick yourself where you leave your keys like by the door so that you see them in the morning even though you think you'll forget. She's sort of taking these extreme measures to make herself do the thing that she really wants to do but will find it hard to do habitually. Right. It's like snapping a rubber band on your wrist. Excellent. Uh, great. So now that we have, we have our four targets of Valencia Dolphs, Niles Black, Jeff Dodge and Frank No, and then we're gonna get the uh, we're gonna get the uh, the game uh, table back up here. Okay, yeah. We lost that. There she is. There we go. Here it comes. Everybody's excited now. 
We got we got two cameras running out of your place. Although not yet. Google Hangouts is a robust system. Yeah, the, there's no flaws to it. I'm, <laughs> I've been largely impressed by it. Although I remember back in the day we used to try doing like a 10-person Hangout, and it was okay, but there was a lot of noise on the line. And the one thing we can't stand as assassins is noise. So one thing we cannot abide... Yeah, we need we need to have the silence to concentrate. There we go. All right, we're back up on that. Okay, Valencia Dolphs, Niles Black, Jeff Dodge, and Frank No. Uh, gentlemen, uh, I have uh, learned as the chief that there is a window of opportunity for these particular individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, that that if you're ever going to kill them, now is the time. All right. Uh, in order to do this, uh, I, I'm going to give you your budget. Okay. And get this guy. There we go. There she Excited. is. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. All right. If you can kill all four with these twenty cards, you guys are going to be the heroes of assassination camp. Just, uh, just some interference here at the at the office. Yeah, you know what? I, I I feel like I should have called this game Assassination Camp. Uh, there's something fun about like, <laughs> like, like a hang out with just like like that wood burned kind of kind of effect with all the all, all the type. Right. Yeah. Well, you can make a kids version that is that. <laughs> is this is so. like an end of camp production? Is it? We've, we've been practicing all week. Right. Yeah. This is our this is our pageant. <laughs> um, all right. To get started. Three gift cards. Oh, the sun's right on right on time. Yay! <laughs> it's gonna be the best. All right, so we've got this. Uh, all right, so the first target is going to be. Dun, 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 dun. Why don't you tell me when to stop shuffling these up? All right, knock it off. It's right now. Stop it now. All right. <laughs> the first target is uh, Valencia Dolphs. Uh, Valencia, what did you do wrong? Or maybe it was just your time. I understand. The artisanal bookbinder with no sense of style. She's currently strapped into a lawn chair. She's in her front yard in her house. Valencia mm -hmm. Dolphs. It's time for her to die. So luckily we have managed to get a sample of her blood. We're going to send that to the machine of death. We're going to see how she dies. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, the books are in. Valencia Dolphs dies of... Oh, oh. What? Blood, blood sugar. Okay. Blood sugar. All right. What does that mean? Okay, we got to think about what that means. Let's we, okay, we so, see what we so, have to work with. So you have some shipping mm. materials. All right. You have a raw material. That's a good. We can use that for sure. Yeah. Yep, another yep. raw material. <laughs> the best. Now, as did, did, cheap, did you shuffle? I did. <laughs> Not well, but all I the did. all the material cards are in the are in the same place in the deck. So you have two raw <laughs> materials and some shipping materials. Uh, her death is blood sugar. Uh, to remind you, she is an artisanal bookbinder. She has no sense of style. Currently strapped into a lawn chair, will die of blood sugar. Let me know what you think uh, you want to try. Um, okay, I feel like we got to reserve one of the raw materials for for sugar. Yeah, because we could bury her in sugar. She's fairly immobile. I don't know how quick she can get out of her out of her lawn chair. So I feel like a lot of the work has been done already for us. Okay, are we are we are we going to go with a like a literal sugar or or, or perhaps more more of a uh, like a, a glycemic index sort of sort of dealy like a you know give her a bit of a diabetic overdose perhaps well, well that's what I'm saying yeah I mean I'm I want her blood sugar to go up or the other interpretation is she's done in by a blood relative who is very dear to her her quote unquote blood sugar <laughs> but I feel like that's a that's that's a stretch <laughs> that's a stretch so yeah. a little bit really of work. Okay. I do like blood relative as a metaphor or as a sort of one interpretation of the term blood yeah mm -hmm. I feel like if 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 you got someone 
for whom sugar is a legitimate term of endearment, yeah. but is also a relative. So it's like this becomes an inbreeding sort of situation. Right. It's, sugar is a little too romantic for a relative. I mean, well, if you of, can try it, you can try it. But uh, I, I mean, if you want to spend some of this in researching her family tree, you know, you <laughs> figure. Tell me how that works. Well, if it was blood, comma sugar, then you know that would open up a lot it, more. Of it. it it would, but it uh, but it's not. So let's go with let's go with the diabetic shock. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That. Okay. So one raw material, sugar for sure. Yeah. Uh, shipping materials. Should we? Should we ship the sugar to her, and when she goes to open it, we bind her to that package with the other raw material? Okay. Uh, perhaps. Um, what are some examples like a, of raw like a, material, David, on the card? A raw material. So crude oil, mm -hmm. uh, a bolt of fabric, uh, pig iron. Those are the examples given on the card specifically. I think okay. sugar. I mean, sugar is mined, or is not mined. It's made from sugar cane or sugar beets. Um, so I think sugar cane or sugar beets would qualify as a raw material. Refined sugar, probably not. Something uh, sugary that is natural might be honey. What about maple sap? Maple sap, I think, would qualify. That feels raw to me. That's true. That's true. Uh, okay, well, the question becomes, okay, so do we... We bring her the. How do we parse this out? We 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 use the raw material that's sugar. We bring her a huge pile of sugar. She goes to investigate it, and then we use the shipping materials, a large shipping container, to deliver her a a, a payload of uh, maple syrup, which which we actually dump on her, and it binds her to the sugar, and then this melange results in her elevated blood sugar and her death. So it's, it actually seeps into her like bloodstream. It's not that she's suffocating in it. She just survives long enough for her... She like, can trip, but she's actually taking enough of it on. It's going through her pores. Yeah, which is how it's, it works. Is, is there any way we could create some, some other kind of delivery mechanism with either a, a raw material or shipping materials? If you could get some sort of a injection device or something to access her bloodstream directly where you can... I think if you were to elevate her blood sugar artificially, you're going to have a good chance. Um, what so a, okay, okay. Um, you know those, those, those uh, round post packs? Okay. Uh, uh, you, you send posters in. You know, like those, a, those, yeah, like a tube, yeah. Like a cardboard tube, yeah. So if you were to send, uh, uh, I guess, you know, somehow get her to open her mouth and ram that thing in her, in her, in, <laughs> you could deliver the sugar. You could just you could just force feed the sugar through a uh, cardboard tube. But how do you how do you convince somebody to do that of their own will to put the tube in her mouth? Maybe she <laughs> thinks something else is in there that that's you good. Get her to yawn. Ah. You could, uh, so, so she's so sitting in the chair. So she, why would she cover her mouth with a tube? I like no, no, the we, getting we, her to yawn. We we, we apply the tube. We. we uh, that's true. That's true. How much assassin intervention I mean, can we use? Here? Remember, she's strapped into a lawn chair, so she may not be able to resist too much uh, uh, action that, that's, that's going to come on onto her. So, well, so, yes, so, so we, could, we could sneak up behind her and, and apply the tube once she's, her mouth is sufficiently open. So Okay, so then her mouth has to be open for some other reason. So what, what other yeah. raw material would make a person just yawn? <laughs> Just yeah, just uh, yeah. Yawning would be a great or, one because or, I think when you yawn, you sneeze uh, or more widely than typical. What about pepper? Yes, we ship raw pepper to her. She starts sneezing. Then we use a poster tube to when she's on sneeze to get it in there, and then we just siphon that sugar down. The perfect crime. I like it. <laughs> All right, no, I'm on board with this so far. Here so you you've got. Then. So your shipping material so far is a mailing tube. Your raw material yep. is maple syrup, and your other raw material is pepper? Yes. Yep. Am I reading that right? Yeah. yeah. And I think I agree with the maple syrup idea, because sugar, you might cough and stuff on it, but the maple syrup will just slide right on down. Yeah, okay. I think it, your throat would kind of close up or dry out with the, with the, uh, the sugar. Right. You need that sweet syrup. To finish so, the um, tell me if I have this right. So, you first you you get some pepper you to, to blow the pepper yeah. in, yeah. To to make her like open her mouth really wide, 
Right. Yep. Then you put the mailing tube in her throat, like just jammed all the way down, and then you just pour maple syrup down it. I don't uh, think it has to even be jammed all the way down. I think it can be gently oh, just uh, in the front. As long as you get well, the airway. She's, 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 she's already tied down, so there's this, you know, she's not, not going to... She may, she may be able to free herself. I don't know how much she's actually... You wouldn't tie yourself down, like, viciously. Just a, maybe a little bit. Yeah, it's tricky yeah, because you have to wonder how much can she really tie herself down. Um, mm -hmm. She probably she has may, some sort of a... Some sort could of be a, buckled in. Could be a buckle. Uh, what we know is that she's strapped in. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a seatbelt situation. In case there's an earthquake, she's not going to go tumbling out. Of right, while well, she's enjoying her lawn. So uh, so my, my, my judgment on this is the, um, the pepper... So and 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 this starts with just approaching her and dousing her with pepper. Am I understanding that correctly? <laughs> yes. Right. Well, one could, one of the easiest tricks in the book. A, you, so, could, you could be posing as a delivery man. <laughs> okay. So walk up with the tube and just a little bit of that like rip torn like kind of confetti from the pocket. <laughs> Can we put on there the delivery address is her nose and mouth? <laughs> Yep. So she's like, I cannot deliver to your address. I I do have to deliver it to your nose or mouth. So <laughs> a sharpie for free as a free item in this. <laughs> uh, so you can write that on there. Okay. How likely is it that um, dousing her with pepper will cause her to open her mouth widely? I will give you a five on that one. So we do we have to beat five? You have to you have to five or higher. All right. Five, five, ooh, five, okay. So that's that's the tough one. Yeah. That's a tough one. Um, I will give you uh, on the and then second second phase. How likely is it that you will be able to shove this tube down her throat such that, or you know, even just into her mouth such that she cannot remove it? That's tough. Um, I, I, I'll give you a four on that one. If you got her to open her mouth with the pepper, I'll give you a four on the tube. Okay. And then to pour maple syrup down her throat such that it chokes and kills her. Piece of cake. Uh, that's a five on that one. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, five, four, five uh, is the rule. Well, well, look, it doesn't even have to kill her straight away, even if she escapes. She, it, she, just needs to to snub, she just had to have yeah. eaten it, exactly. Yeah. That's okay. true. It'll get into her blood. That's why it's a five and not a six. It'll oh, get into okay. her bloodstream, and it will be, uh, you know, she, she may uh, feel the effects of this for some time. That's true. She might run okay. for her kit and get that uh, insulin. Okay. Uh, so is this is is, is are, are we agreed that this is a plan to attempt? Let's give it a shot. Cool. All right. Five, four, five is the roll. Ninety seconds on the clock. I'm gonna have you guys roll individually. Um, we'll start with you, Nate, and then yep. we'll go to Chris, and then we'll alternate. So uh, to, to just to sort of remind everybody the rules, if you get a uh, the desired roll or higher, we'll move on to the next thing, and uh, if you don't, then we stop, and I will. Uh, burn that card, we draw a new card, and something went wrong with the plan, we have to figure out the next uh, uh, step. And just to keep it clear, I'll announce who should be rolling at any given time so that we don't get confused. Okay. And so when you roll, just announce what you what you got. Right. Okay. You get the uh, uh, the skull, Nate, I think you probably have the official die. Uh, we'll have to flip the coin. Uh, Chris, I don't know if you have a, the official die, but if you have a die with a one on it, that'll count as the skull for our purposes. I have a blank die. Will that work? That'll die. as long it's as it's a, blank on, it's on everything. A, it's just a cube. It's just it's just a, it's just a counting block. <laughs> like a math. Just have to think of a number between one and six. <laughs> it's just to remind me of what a cube is, in case I forget. Uh, all right, so uh, five four five is the roll. Ninety seconds on the clock. Ooh, uh, this is Nate, tough. Nate, it's you first. Are you okay. ready? And ready. Let me win. As soon as the music starts, go. We got a six. Yes. Six. All right. So, the, so we. Oh we man, have she must be allergic to pepper hardcore. We have the pe we have the pepper. All right, Chris, roll for the for the mailing tube. Let's get that tube. A four. <laughs> we got a four. We got yes. the tube. All right. All right. So Nate, we need the uh, maple all syrup. Right. Bring us home. All right. All right. Pop in the syrup tube. All right. And a five. A five, you got it. All right, so yeah. sure. Let's move on to the aftermath. Keep going. Uh, four is establish an alibi using a musical instrument. Where were you? <laughs> okay. Um, okay. I we would... could. We, uh, okay. Uh, we could play the tune for, from an ice cream van and make people think it was like you know like a like a, a traveling ice cream man. 
she forgot uh, that's and a, ate a that's bunch a, of ice cream. Maybe Wait, she ate uh, ice cream. She was eating ice cream at the time. We were eating ice cream yeah. at the time. Uh, that's a six. Roll for that. Oh my god. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna roll it. Go first. Ah, death. I got a death. Here we go. Uh, you, gotta flip, you gotta flip the coin. Here we go. Yes, I got it. We got the ice cream. Yes. Okay. We got the ice cream. Uh, next, destroy the evidence using a liquid. Oh, blast it with water. What could be simpler? Just like oh, yeah, a fire. Just, 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 Wash the yeah, sugar just, away. Just dunk it in a bucket. Put, All put right, the, that's the four. Uh, Nate, bucket. roll okay. for it. Roll it. We got three. Ah, I didn't All right, and it. time is up. All right, so we did not uh, get the water to wash the, wash things away. Guys, let me explain what happened here. Um, so you this plan went amazingly exactly as we had hoped. You walked up with just a fistful of pepper. This was a six roll. So you you just said, "Excuse me, ma'am, I'm trying to get to the just pepper in the face instantly." Yeah, not even the pretense of delivery. Does this does this smell like pepper to you? Uh, yeah, exactly. Can you please verify to me that this is actually pepper? Uh, she uh, gets and then she opens her mouth, sneezing, sneezing, sneezing. Uh, mailing tube right in the trachea. The maple syrup poured down, and then really, there's nothing to do at that point but wait. There was we, there was uh, a lot of patience on our part, a lot of patience on her part, who knew it was her time. <laughs> it, uh, it was a group effort. We said we were uh, from uh, Machine of Death. We represent them, and you know. It kind of speaks for itself. Card carrying members. Meanwhile, a uh, uh, you claimed when the when the when the authorities arrived that an ice cream truck uh, <laughs> had been going by, and that we were all there eating ice cream. We have no ice cream to show for it, but the music is still sort of playing in the background. Uh, right. and, and and but the intense scent of pepper is just yeah. It just it it, it pervaded the entire uh, uh, scene. And as far as the authorities were were concerned, that's. I mean, pepper equals ice cream. Yeah. Oh, cool. It was an artisanal, like a seasonal flavor. Excellent. It was ma maple flavor, even if they, you know, they that's do an autopsy. That's true. Pepper maple. That's a. That's a. It goes with bacon. It's, it sounds. It sounds like one of those. Uh, yeah, those kind of independent ice cream flavors. <laughs> yeah. Uh, excellent job. So you used up three cards, and the first kill. Is uh, is 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 uh, successful. Um, you did. You got one bonus uh, card. So you have um, at this point and at any point in the future, you want to swap it out from any for any future round. You have the specialist of uh, Chupi, the Elven Ranger, who has the power <laughs> to squish into a ball and squeeze through a tiny space. Okay, uh, so this will rest in your budget. If okay. you need to swap that out for any gift card in the future, you are able to. Uh, so that's a great job, guys. Uh, let's uh, let's move on to, this, to the next kill. So you go ahead and give me a give me a give me a point to stop. So um, David, which which set is this uh, specialist card from? Is, is it from the core? This particular one is from the Web Comic Pals. This card is from uh, oh, Anthony Clark's uh, bonus card. So he Excellent. All right, tell me when to stop. Stop it. All right, stop. there we go. So blood sugar, Valencia Dolphs is done. The new target is Frank No. He loves uh, potato crisps. He uh, uh, only drinks iced tea. It's the only thing he will uh, abide. Uh, currently, he is camping at a bus stop. Camping at a bus stop. It just paints a wonderful picture. Uh, sipping away. Does, yeah, I, having, I imagine it's raining. You know. He's just surrounded by empty bags of, uh, of crisps. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. I just can't get enough of them. Uh, you have a liquid? Oh, Some well, food? Oh, and just, it couldn't go this any is, better. Oh. <laughs> and, and a vehicle. vehicle. The bus he's waiting for. This thing is doing itself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Liquid food, a vehicle. We were gonna send uh, a sample of, uh, of Frank's blood to the machine of death. Oh, and true. it all depends if this is, on the if sample. If it's drowning or choking, we're 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 free and clear. Right. <laughs> if it's bus arrival, I'll be very happy. <laughs> Oversized heart. 
well, um, being, being overly yeah. hydrated can uh, do that, right? It, if, if you only ate crisps and iced tea, then there is a, 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 a significant chance you will have uh, enlarged arteries. That's true. Or, or <laughs> what if he died because of a kind act that he was doing, a final oh. moment? Interesting. But his heart was too large, and he suffered. He paid the ultimate price, but he did save the puppy. That he was, was too kind. Too he kind. Was too kind. He should have minded his own business. Okay. Let's, let's see what we can do, though, with both with this. So, uh, now, what does he dislike? What did, What did he not like? Well, so he he only oh, drinks iced tea. He only, he only drinks iced like tea. Any other beverage. Oh, that's right. That's beverages right. are not in his in his purview. Okay. Okay. So we. Here's the problem. He'll die of an oversized heart. How do we get his heart to be oversized? <laughs> it might be easier to steer him into an act of kindness than to, again, have to wait patiently until this condition presents itself. <laughs> until, yeah, yeah. This is a this is a long you job. This is Ten years. <laughs> right. I, I I will give you um, the suggestion. If you can inflate his heart somehow, you might have a good chance. Right. Right. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Well, what what if it was a it, it was a, a a true act of altruism that that uh, you know uh, something to do with with another bus passenger, okay, or or uh, you know perhaps uh, hmm. yeah I guess someone that comes along perhaps you know perhaps the the, uh, the bus hits someone uh, or perhaps uh, um, I don't know there's, there's down on their luck uh, bus traveller who's who's out of Food and water, and uh, so do you know, we need his last pack of crisps? Do we? But how would it kill him? Is the problem? So we, I'm assuming the vehicle is the bus. We have the bus. Yeah. And we yeah. could probably get him on that bus that he's that he's waiting for. But once he gets on it, what act would then would then kill him? Because we can't then steer the vehicle into anything. Well, you, I mean, you can get him. If you can figure out some way to maybe get him in front of the bus such that he's like rescuing something, but the bus then hits him, I think there's a chance you could make that qualify. That's true. I mean, look, I mean, the obvious answer is that I have, I'm just being seared by the sun's rays and my retinas. <laughs> but the you cut a striking figure, though. It's very, very like it's Dutch. It's very Lafonge. It's like I'm wearing a face recognition vaulting <laughs> makeup. Right. Uh, Okay, so the obvious plan here is we give him his favorite drink, we give him his favorite food, and then we just blast him with a bus. <laughs> and all we have to do is put his... And now the only thing is that we have to argue that it's, that it's over, making his heart oversized. How, do we, how can we make that argument, Nate? We, we need... We need, we, we need uh, uh, WebMD to find out what other conditions cause an enlarged heart at a, at a, <laughs> Rated rates. You need to look up look up conditions. Okay, I would argue I would argue that being struck by a bus would, at least from the direction of movement from that vector, would crush the heart and make it appear oversized. <laughs> Well, if, if, if you, you could actually, cause swelling of the heart somehow, that, that is also true. He might have swelling as a as a result of his injuries from the bus crash. Yeah, could, could, just could be but, the trauma causes. Okay, yeah, no, I, I'm getting what you're laying down here. You're going to try and hit him with the bus such that it squishes his heart to the bursting point, and by it being enlarged by that uh, bursting action, that that's how. That you're is gonna... actually why he's why he's killed. And and yeah, well, it, oh, yeah. it's because his heart was too large, like it became too large for the, the tensile strength of the walls mm -hmm. of the heart itself is what caused right. it. It's not designed for that kind of deformation. Okay, yeah, I well, think you, there's an argument to be made yeah. there. Well, it's like if you, if you get a, a punched in the, in, in the mouth, you get a fat lip. It's, it's, it's kind of internal version of that. So the question becomes, if we, get, if we use iced tea as our liquid and we use potato crisps as our food, is that enough to entice him into the road where, where well, the bus he's waiting for is we, probably going to arrive? We put the iced tea in the road. Okay. We we give him all of the all of the crisps. That's it. All of the crisps. That's it. We make him so thirsty. He's got to go even for it. even though he's got a drink bottle in his bag because he's you know he's camping out. 
<laughs> What's the iced tea in the road? Well, okay, and, uh, we can qualify it though. What's in the road is not just iced tea; it's the freshest, best iced tea. It's like okay. it's like a luxury brand iced tea. That's okay. true. You, right. you can okay. provide with this card some some version of iced tea that he has never seen. Is the greatest iced tea yeah. known to man? It's the Rolls Royce of iced teas, and much like exactly. Rolls Royce, it is in the road. It's it's the gold schlager of iced tea. It's got it's got gold flecks in it. It's, 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 <laughs> That's $1, it. Thousand dollars a bottle. Yeah. Okay. So, wow. All right. Yeah. We're, let's do it. So, liquid okay. iced tea reserve, beautiful, the best. The best. First thing we can do is give him the chip. Best. So. Yes. Yeah. Him very thirsty because you give him. I'm presuming also the best chips. Sure. Oh, of course. He can't Salt turn them down. Chips. Yeah. Money is no object. <laughs> when it Salty comes to chip. killing this man, <laughs> we spare uh, no okay. expense. So we've got the saltiest chips possible. And then we've got the most delicious iced tea possible, and then we've got the bus that he's waiting for. And it's and it's the best right. bus. Too. It's the best bus. It's an amazing luxury. It's oh, yeah. it's, uh, it's one of those kind where the seats recline 100% uh, for overnight journeys through the desolate wastes. Right. So uh, okay, so you give him just hey, we know that you like uh, chips, and crisps. Here's some right. like we're we're testing a new flavor. It's amazing. Try it out. He's like, oh, this is delicious. Oh, I'm so thirsty. Well, we're also happen to be trying out a new iced tea. Unfortunately, the only sample is there in the center of the road. Right. 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 And then, um, so then the bus is going to come around the corner while he's in the center of the road, smash him in the center, like flat on, such that his ribs crush his heart into a pancake until it bursts. Until it's oversized right. from that right. direction. Or yeah. I'm, and if, if you want to add a little extra, like a Twilight Zone hubris on there, I would say that we do make the bus a luxury bus, and it has his name on it, and it's like, you know, welcome, uh, Frank, no, we love you, buddy. And then that makes his heart swell with pride as he's killed. It's, it's, it's pre-swollen by that much yeah, more. Yeah, he's actually, he's, yeah, he feels good, and he doesn't have to have a bad end. He's, Excellent. He he's just was excited about this bus. All right. right. I'm going to grab a charging cable for this phone so it doesn't die in the middle of it. And meanwhile, oh. if he tells you need to work out, do it now. All right, let's see here. I I'm feel pretty good about it, but let's run through because we can't we can't possibly nail all these rolls again. What if we don't yeah. get the chips? How do we okay. encourage him into the road? Well, uh, well, I, I guess it comes down to what we draw, but we we need to. We could oh, still, well, I guess we could just push him into the road, couldn't we? Or, we could uh, push him in. Yeah, that's true. Depending on what we get. Yeah. Plus, I mean, um, if we got something like a musical instrument or we got some sort of an implement, we could maybe hurl it at him with enough force to knock him into the road. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. he, and then while in the road, he might say, ah, I'm so mad about what just happened. At least I got this iced tea to enjoy. And then he'll and, and sit down and, and, and crack a crack right, bottle. Yeah. Open it up yeah. and just enjoy his, you know, kind of collect himself. Excellent. Okay, I think I think if if we but what if we lose the vehicle? How how we he's sitting in the middle of the road drinking? How are we gonna whack him? <sighs> Again, we gotta find a way to oversize his heart. If we come up with like a <laughs> pump, we could we could throw that into the mix. That would be ideal. Right. A piece of yeah. machinery. Okay. But yeah, that's a roll. That's a roll contingent. <laughs> a card contingent scenario. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> um, let's get the ratings. What? Is, uh, how likely is it that if you give him the saltiest uh, uh, crisp possible, he's going to want to devour them. I think fairly likely. Uh, this oh, is something sure. that he's known, he's known to enjoy. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to give you... I'm going to give you a four on that one, which is right down the middle. Okay. Uh, how likely is it that if you then present him with the most delicious iced tea possible, he's going to want that? I think also a four, because... Uh, well, the fact that it's in the road makes it a little bit suspicious. Makes it a little harder, huh? Yeah, I'm I'm bump it to a to a five for that reason. Okay. Four or five so far, and then a vehicle. Uh, how likely is it that this bus will strike him? I think it's likely that it will strike him because it is under your control. Uh, right. We can aim it at him. That it yeah. will. It will. Uh, enlarge his oh, heart specifically. Yeah. That's very angle dependent. Mm -hmm. We would have to consult a a doctor and possibly a, a physicist, but uh, in their absence, right? And I just <laughs> come back. 
A physicist and a bus driver. All three of them could weigh in. <laughs> Experts in their field. Uh, so I'm, I, I think um, I will buy the oversized heart as a, being a function of compression, mm -hmm. uh, but because it's so angle dependent and there's so many factors involved, uh, that's also five. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, so, all right. So we. Uh, so the rolls are four, five, five. And I'll start us off this time because you went ah. first last. Good luck. All right. Chris, are you ready? I am ready. Uh, first is a four, and go. Oh, five. All right. We won't throw you, you have the chips. All right, the chips. He's munching away. Yeah. Would you, how would you like to try these uh, chips? Oh, you're thirsty. Well, just, just look over here. We have uh, three. Oh, no. So not have the I've, I've got to bring the gold version of the, uh, of the no, iced tea. No iced tea. No, what we got? Something black. <laughs> oh, black iced tea. <laughs> you can't get the same what about, Dang what it. about black, black ice? Black ice. He stands up from the bus stop and he slips into the road on some black ice. Let's okay. Do you want the word? bus to slip or do you want him to slip? No, he'll him to slip. He'll, he'll slip, slip into the road. Uh, in that case, yeah. that's, that's, still a, that's still a five for him to get in the center of the road. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, so well, okay well, what if the bus were to slip on some black ice and come on, uh, you know... If, the, if you want the bus to slip, that's a four, because oh, okay. the bus has got a lot more momentum. Let's do that. All right, okay. so yeah. I'm going yeah. to swap the order then, so you got to get the bus first. So you got to get five and then four. So five for the bus. Nate, roll for that. Roll them, Nate. Okay, okay, five for the bus. Six. Yes. All right, we got the bus. Chris, we need a we need a five for right. the for we the need that ice. So we need a four for the black ice. Four for the come on no, black ice. Can't stop. Two. Break can't can't work. Ah. No black ice. Instead, you have okay. a person how slash profession. Stop? The bus is on the road, but how do we get it toward him? Person slash profession. Okay, we have a like a Caltrans, like a like a transportation worker who's flagging him towards the guy. Right, that's a four. Roll for the four. That's a four. Okay. Right. Okay. No, it's a three. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> come on, come on. Yeah. Mr. Let me explain what happened right here. Okay. Mr. No got away. You gave him the uh, you gave him the crisps. He enjoyed it. Uh, you said we got some iced tea. He's like, it's in the middle of the road. I'm not gonna get ice road iced tea. <laughs> so said, well this bus anyway. Bus comes careening around the corner. Uh, slips on the black ice, recovers, however, very professional bus driver, didn't get the memo. <laughs> uh, Caltrain worker flagged him off to the side, but he's not going to follow a sign into a man, so <laughs> unfortunately it didn't work. But here's here's what we can do. We can pick up here three more cards. Uh, start from the bus is in the street. He is right. coming from the bus and pick it up from there. See, see, if, you can, see if you can fix the... Uh, Fix the plan. So we have another chance. We do, okay. because we have so many cards left. We're going to keep going. So All you right, used try. up one, two, three, four, five cards on this plan. Those are in the burned pile. We're going we're gonna to deal you, uh, give you another chance here. Okay, okay. So uh, Frank No is, uh, is still on the docket. Now you have something Canadian. Okay. A second thing Canadian. <laughs> And something made of paper. Okay, so, let, okay. Let, me, let me very clearly paint the scenario. He has eaten these very salty chips. So he's thirsty now. He is thirsty now, but he did not drink the ice tea. Okay. Suspicious. Okay. This uh, bus is careening through the street presently. He ah. is, of course, cowering from it, uh, taking shelter... He was camping at the bus stop, so he's taking shelter in his tent. Okay. Right. Uh, behind that uh, enclosure, that sort of rain shelter. Okay. Uh, something Canadian, something Canadian, and made of paper. How you can do it. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I guess something Canadian could be a, 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 a some kind of elk or deer. Right. Uh, is, that, it, that is it specifically uh, like a Canadian species? Like a moose? Oh, well, obviously. Obviously. What, uh, okay, caribou, yep. Okay, okay. We could do that, and then I guess that might jolt him. Now, I, has the bus gone by, or is it just recovered? The bus has recovered, but it has not passed the plane where he is. Uh, okay, so we still, so the bus is still in play. Yeah. Okay. We, can, so we still the, have to launch caribou, him into the street. But, but we could launch the bus into the, into the uh, bus shelter. 
Okay, what if, I'm going to, let me throw this at you. What if we, instead of, since the iced tea didn't work, we use uh, Canadian moose urine, which looks exactly like iced tea, but across the street, okay. he won't know until he gets there, but before, by then he'll be hit by the bus. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. There's, I mean, there's a lot of variables in that. <laughs> but you could, you could attempt that. Absolutely you could. Okay. All right. Well, look. Let's. So, what? What would the other Canadian thing that we? Let's just. Let's just spitball. No bad ideas and brainstorm. Is there no any kind of a, like a like a a specifically Canadian weapon that you can actually use a caribou as a projectile to push the bus, so that it 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 moves into the bus shelter? Well, what if we use an authority figure like we have a mounted policeman, a Royal Canadian mounted policeman, uh, come on out and he just says, "Hey, you have to get in the road." <laughs> Orders the caribou into the road. Yeah, he orders. The, he says, "You get on the caribou and you get in the road." Um, you yeah, you could try that. <laughs> a, a, a bag of milk. A bag of milk. Um, I was thinking, maybe what about like a, hockey, like a hockey puck? You could you could maybe try and try and uh, shoot it such that it like hits the steering wheel and veers the bus. Oh, into him. Okay. Through the window. Okay. Oh, I see. Well, uh, and maybe we can have use the okay. Let's use the. Let, I'm still saying let's use a mounted policeman who says, right. "Hey, hey, I've got business with you. You stay right here, or you're in big trouble, okay. Mister." And then we shoot that hockey puck at the bus, so that it so that the steering wheel will turn it towards. But he can't go because he doesn't want to get a ticket. <laughs> wait, exactly. explain, wait, explain the role of the mounty to me again in this plan. <laughs> the the mounty is the one keeping him there. He's the Wait, one saying, you stay in that tent. Frank? I'm, I'm upset, Frank. So <laughs> the Mountie says, hold on, this is like a crime scene. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're, you're under suspicion. You yeah, you can't you leave. Yeah. You have to stay in this bus zone. <laughs> you have to stay in this bus zone. You have to stay within 20 yards of the bus at all times. And if you stay in this bus zone, made a paper, would give you $20. <laughs> See, this is a further <laughs> enticement, a further enticement for him to stay. <laughs> All right. Let me just let me let me figure, let me see if I have this right. So far, I'm I'm moving the order of this. Okay. So you get a mounty, and the mounty says, uh, "Excuse me, Frank. You're gonna have to stay right where you are, because right. it's an ongoing investigation. Right. Hmm. And if you do, we give you twenty dollars, <laughs> which is common in a police investigation. Uh, and then." Meanwhile, so you're hoping Frank will say, of course. Sure. Uh, then you uh, take a hockey stick and a hockey puck, you slap shot into, through the window of the bus such that it strikes okay. the steering wheel or, or the driver such that he oh, yanks the, the steering yeah. wheel. Either yeah. would work. Right. The bus veers, okay. takes out the bus shelter, maybe the Mountie too, maybe the $20, and, <laughs> um, and, and, and wipes it and with the same compression. Uh, the uh, same, we're still going for that compression. You is, also is have the smush into a ball. To, I, was, I was just about to mention that. Is there any opportunity to use the uh, the smush into a ball there? Well, I was thinking if we save him, uh, if and if this thing goes off the rails again, we maybe yeah. we can launch this little fella into his aorta. That's what I was just about to say. This, if you can get yeah. this guy into his body, I feel like he could do some damage, or he can use one of these other items, and maybe like. You know, I, I, is there anything specifically Canadian that expands well, we, we by could, nature? We could, we could use the hockey stick instead of the, the piece of paper, because I think the piece of paper is probably a little bit, little bit uh, kind of uh, flimsy. But it's uh, a little bit if, flimsy. If we were to, because we could ignore the bus, we we could, we could uh, get get the hockey stick to to hit. Our little elf friend into oh, his mouth, knock him in, or into, into his into his into his aorta, for example. So he could squeeze through tiny spaces. So we could even squeeze through a uh, pore. Uh, pore. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That might even be a little bit better. And then. Okay. So then, if he were to make it into the heart, do he just does some stretches, or he just yeah, he just balls? he just goes back he, from ball to just side. expand. Yeah. <laughs> he okay. squishes and into so a ball, and then he pops back up. So which would you, which of these three things would he be replacing? We got to replace the paper. Ooh. So we, well, we could. Re what if we? What if we? What if we use the paper to to 
because uh, we don't need the mounting necessarily. Uh, that's if true. We, if, we, if we keep him still using the piece of paper. Okay, the piece of paper is a coupon for a free right. uh, iced tea. Yes. <laughs> so he wants Perfect. that. So he's, Perfect. So he's hanging out for that, and all he's got to do is fill out his, his information for their data mining for the brand. Right. Right. So he's, he's, so he's email there address. filling. Yeah. He's putting his email address, and he's gonna drop it in the in the post later on. Then we have the hockey stick, right? Okay. Yeah. And, then, and then the hockey stick, you you slap shot the little, little this uh, little elven ranger ball into yeah. his body through any opening, frankly. Right. Right. Could right. you know, be anything that has any remote uh, <laughs> path to the inside. In a in a vague at him direction. Yeah. And then yeah. he squeezes through and tell it, and then you can walk away. You can. Right. We just wait. You say, do you tell right. him? Wait till the ear's in the heart, and then pop out. Right. So he's yeah. he's gonna. So if he goes in the ear, it might be twenty four hours before he finds his way into the heart. It's it's windy in there. Right. Well, this you know it's bloodstream. So you know uh, how long does it take for your entire cassette? You make it to the bloodstream. Eventually, you just you just sit back and relax. Could let, be a couple yeah. minutes. Yeah. yeah. Let the current do the work. Yeah. <laughs> And then, do we have to use the other Canadian card at that point, or does that, or does our specialist no, I think replace it, it, it? It replaces it, yeah. Exactly. If it replaces it, then the Canadian goes into your budget, and you you've now got the. I'm that for I'm thing. for that swap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I second. So, so let's let's re, let's weigh relatively the uh, the two plans, and we'll see which is the more uh, valuable. So the original plan was Mountie, twenty dollar bill, and hockey stick. Were the three hockey stick slash hockey puck still a winner? Uh, I think the kit of the two. Right. Okay. So how likely is it that the Mountie will make him stick around? Well, when you add the twenty dollars in the mix, right? <laughs> um, first that was a, just a, yeah. a law-abiding citizen, but now I'm going to be rich. And then the uh, hockey puck to to hit the guy and make him veer. I think this is fives down the line. Five, five, five. Okay, that's kind of okay. rough. All right. Uh, meanwhile, if you were to trade this out, trade this guy uh, in for something Canadian. So number one is coupon. Uh, number two is hockey stick again, and then get him into the aorta. Uh, the coupon is is I think is uh, he's got a lot to 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 gain from that coupon because he gets some valuable promotions from all the iced tea vendors. <laughs> right, right. But this is a weird time to ask for that. So. I'm going to give that a five. Then the hockey stick, solid four, right down the middle. All right. Get this guy into his body, that's a three, because he will do damage. Okay. But this okay. is probably the more likely plan if you wanted to proceed this way. Okay. All right. Then let's, I say let's play with these odds here. And let's, uh, let's do it. Let's do this one. So it's a five, four, yeah. three. Five, four, three yeah. is the roll. So uh, second something Canadian card goes into your reserve. We keep that as a, as a gift. Yeah. yeah, you can yeah. use that for later if you need to. Put that back in. So it's made of paper, something Canadian, smush into a ball are your three. Uh, okay. So we'll start, uh, when, uh, Nate, we'll start with you. Okay. Uh, uh, f uh, the, the roll is five for the coupon, and go. All right. Uh, so excuse me, sir. Would you like to sign up for our uh, mailing list for a free sample of six? Yes. All yes. Right. Perfect. So then, all right, Chris. We need a four on this a hockey stick. All right, I'm gonna line it up. It's a four. It's a four. All right. Him. All right. right. Do you work? Do you work? Shoot him ball. Shoot him up. All we gotta Come do is on. hit him. Come on. It's a three. All yes. right, you got him. Five right. numbers. You made it. He is dead. Meanwhile, we need a uh, confuse the witnesses using an event or social circumstance. Oh, uh, it's a marching band. <laughs> it just goes right by. It just goes right in and obscures everything. That's a four. That's a four. Oh, it's a two. I didn't get it. I'm sorry. I uh, didn't get that. Uh, we need uh, to comfort the target's next of kin using some adventuring gear. Oh, okay. His family. He's he's actually catching the bus up to the mountains with his family. So we need we need a climbing kit. Will we bring it to him like in memory of him? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a that's a, that a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, so. We're very sorry for your. We've luck. got a five. Here's this we, All right, you do have a five. Uh, okay, so now we need to flee the scene using a gas. <laughs> Okay, it's a uh, high, uh, high uh, Ninja smoke. Ninja smoke. <laughs> oh, that's a bad. Ninja smoke, I feel like it's a four. That's, that's a four. A <laughs> all right, I'm rolling a four. It's a four. We got a four. All yeah. right, you got a four. Uh, all right, now we need... That time is up. We're out of time. Uh, 
All right. Ah, so let's, good let's, good you, guys, you guys nailed this right down the line, which I'm very proud of you for. So um, here's a coupon. He's like, you know what? Typically I would pass in the case where a bus is careening at me, but these are, promotions are so valuable, I cannot pass them right. up. Fills yeah. them out. Uh, so then you take that hockey stick, you get the Chippy the Elven Ranger, smash him. Uh, I would say he went into the ear is what happened. Yeah. Uh, and then... You just went home. I mean, you got that. You got the uh, uh, the marching band was lovely, but not sufficiently distracting. But you went to prepare they took the, the wrong street. The, they went down the wrong road. <laughs> <laughs> you could hear them from you know the alley across the way. Uh, you got the, the the ropes and the and the uh, and the grapples in memory of of Frank, who loved to climb. Of course, the family's. <laughs> Charmed by the by the by the touching gesture, right? They were they were embossed <laughs> with his name. And then you said, and then while they were looking the other way, just ninja smoke just, and just vanished. Smoke. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> six weeks later, uh, Chippy finally made it into his his heart, and <laughs> he was just some of his favorite Chris, and Chippy was just stretching it out. I love, how, tell, like, just, in his inner ear. I love how his family received the, the in memoriam stuff, <laughs> and, but he was still alive for him. <laughs> so, <laughs> he knew uh, something was weird. <laughs> uh, so he was, uh, yeah, so his heart, in, I, I want you to picture very clearly what happened. His heart actually just rent at the seams. Right. Just, <laughs> just like, thought, just pulling like, it's like Hulk Hogan's t shirt coming apart. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, um, alien uh, chest burster. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> but like one fourth the speed. Oh yeah, yeah. it was a lot slower. He uh, he untucked mm. from that ball shape. Yeah. All right, so you used up your uh, your you used up your chippy card, so that's burned. But you only used two gift cards, so uh, you're back on track after the the, the initial failure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For two more targets, so okay, you guys we, are. In we can get two more. We can do this. Yeah. And you've got uh, something Canadian here in your in your budget reserve in case you need that anytime. Uh, all right, you've got uh, your next your next target. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Niles Black. Niles Black, the Olympic commenter. So he is not only a commenter on the Olympic Games, but he is an Olympic level commenter in terms of his skill. So right. oh, yeah, he's, he's at, training since, since birth. And having opinions. Uh, he is allergic to red wine, and he is currently in line at the airport, probably heading to some sporting event. Right. To, to give where, he's, where he's needed. Yeah, where his, his, his unique skill is going to be of service. Yeah, you you guys wouldn't wouldn't uh, get much of this on the media, but the uh, the, the Commonwealth Games are uh, on at the moment. So are they? So Maybe yeah, that's where you are. Yeah. Uh, so let's uh, shuffle up your budget here. You are going to have. I'm going to Google it real quick, but because absolutely we do not get that. <laughs> real life it's, robot. Basically, it's it's where the rest of the world gets together and has their Olympics without the U.S. So we can win some medals. <laughs> This is why, so he's on a plane to go there, and he's like, I don't know why am I, I don't know what this is. Yeah, this is not the Olympics, this is not my, this is not my cup of tea, but I guess right. it, for him it's sort of like the, uh, it's like the time trials, because when the Olympics rolls around, he's all used to. All right, he's got the pattern down, right. he knows exactly what to say. Okay, so, so we have, have. You have a real life robot, and so this is not like the Terminator, this is like. A robot that exists in the present day for real. Like an assembly line okay. arm. Exactly, yeah. 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 Uh, a vehicle, again, so uh, we got a, we got a discount down at the motor pool, and something okay. made of paper. Okay, we got a, okay. Lot of, a lot of paper goods. It all depends on how he's going to die, though. So the, uh, his, okay. we'll, we'll take his, uh, his sample, we'll send it down to the machine of death. He will die of... Hospital gown. Okay, so he. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. 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 So, so he's at, can, and he's at an airport. I wish he was at a hospital. It would have made our job. Right. We could send him to hospital though with a vehicle. And the gown uh, could be made of paper. 
right? It's made of that kind of <laughs> crummy paper that they use. Is that is that acceptable, Chief? Uh, I think you could argue that, sure. Okay, okay. okay, okay. I mean, I think that's going to be a little bit of a stretch, but... Um, the problem is how does it kill him? Uh, well, I mean, the, the, the good news is that hospital gown is an object, so this object can become lethal in many different ways. Okay, okay, that's okay. true. Uh, so let's see. He's at the airport. We could find a way to... Uh, I suppose that like the nurses station like the like the triage like the the small medic facility at the airport rather does not right. actually it wouldn't put you in a gown probably not no okay so we no. have to we do have to transport him to a hospital from the airport I mean okay. you so we, we we could use the vehicle to transport okay, to, so, we, so it could be an ambulance so we have an ambulance we have a robot to injure him right and right then, and then but once he's there and we have a gown made of paper uh, how does that actually... How does that kill him? I feel like um, if you are going to get him to a hospital, you can plausibly assume if he is admitted, they will put him in a gown. So maybe you could use that paper for something else. In the same way, if you were to critically injure him at the airport, you can assume they would put him in an ambulance, take him to the hospital, like, like um, in case that vehicle is more useful in, in another way. For example... At an airport, an airplane causing a problem might end up with somebody somebody critically injured. So just I see. I see. So the vehicle could he, could be a plane. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Could be, yeah. Mm -hmm. What did you? What'd you ooh, ooh. I was I was intrigued. Um, sorry, I was I was thinking uh, with the uh, the robot. So because he's, he's a hospital gown is 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 his uh, his his, his uh, means of death. Could the could the robot be? One of those mechanical arms they use to lift up uh, patients, and 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 perhaps it gets tangled in the gown and and, and ch uh, chokes him. Oh, I see. So so maybe the vehicle is like, <laughs> but is that would it be considered a robot chief? Where like the like the winch, uh, like like that on a on a medevac helicopter would be considered a robot. I don't know that a winch <laughs> would be considered. I think one of those remote surgery robots where it's like some doctor. Can be in like a, a separate room and operating like a remote control. Right. Like that would definitely. Yeah, and it could, it could, could, could go haywire and get tangled in, in the uh, in the. Oh, in the gown. Or, and instead of doing yeah. the surgery, it's just like raking his flesh with a scalpel. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, or it, or it, it it could even be like ready to do this very intricate surgery, and then just its little tiny pincer claws are just shoving the gown into his veins. <laughs> ah, yes. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. or how about this? If, since it's maybe we can have something made of paper, what he's going in to get surgery for requires uh, laser surgery, and it sets the paper on fire, and he's incinerated. It sets the uh, gown on fire. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. If you were to incinerate this gown, I feel like that would that could very likely be lethal. So, what injury could he sustain? <laughs> that would have any possibility of of nicking the gown with a laser. It's like he gets a piece of glass in his eye from the vehicle accident, right. and he has to get LASIK. <laughs> like that doesn't really. <laughs> it doesn't make a lot of sense. Do but, they, but they, they put you in a gown for that, or is it just? It's I was going to say, do they have to strip down for that? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, what if the vehicle accidentally gives him a tattoo and he has to <laughs> laser removal? <laughs> But he wants. No, no, it's, to, it's, so he's using a, a, a telepresence of the best tattoo laser removal uh, uh, doctor in the nation. But he couldn't come. But he could use the laser robot. <laughs> that doesn't work. Don't it's, don't do it. Uh, uh, don't do uh, it. Come on, uh, uh, hospital gown. So 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 ways he could die via hospital gown it could be asphyxiation. It could be wrapped around his his throat. Right. He could get. Uh, uh, and, uh, it could catch on fire if it's made of paper. Sure. Mm -hmm. Or uh, it could, um, he could perhaps have. if if he got infected from uh, uh, someone you know didn't didn't want to uh, uh, kind of uh, you know lift the gown to 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 put in some 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 IV fluid and they just injected it straight through and you got a bit of fabric or, that kind of <laughs> or maybe it's a dirty hospital gown maybe it's a filthy right. hospital gown and yeah, that's an right. infection could be, could from be. it yeah okay yeah. so it could ooh, ooh, so it could, it could be from uh, uh, um, oh, what's the uh, Ebola? Ebola. It could be an Ebola gown. Okay, how about this? <laughs> we, how about this? 
We have, I'm going to say, maybe the robot is the thing that does the injury near the airport. Maybe some okay. luggage handling yep. system. Travelator. Right. Travelator accident. Okay, I don't know if it, <laughs> if it counts. <laughs> but uh, then the vehicle we send is not a hospital ambulance. It looks very much like it, but it's a hospital laundry truck. And it's filled okay. with filthy things. They load him in with his wound, and then he gets an, an infection from the dirty hospital gowns inside. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we've got I something. Think, I'm just going to make this suggestion. I, I, I like that a lot. I like the idea that the that the uh, the the hospital laundry tr truck resembles an ambulance so like precisely. We well, may need to. I, I feel like this is the sort of thing <laughs> that you would see. You know, where it's like taxi cab brand pizza delivery, and the pizza car looks like a taxi cab. Right. 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 Yeah, um, it's red and blue laundry service. Right, and so right. if you have, um, <laughs> it has these lights that just like like shine to show like the great deals they're having. Right. Yeah. They're yeah. having a sale, <laughs> so <they're, laughs> it's just this beacon. You could, I'll just say hypothetically, you could use this made of paper as some sort of like an order to put him in this instead of waiting for the other ambulance or something. I see. I see. I see. So maybe maybe we could say that. Okay, who would write that order? I mean, you have the paper. You have the have president of the airport, I guess. <laughs> would, would. I refuse. To, yeah, you know what it could be? It could be an ordinance banning real ambulances. From the <laughs> so they, okay, so he's injured, and but because of this ordinance, there's no way to get to the hospital with an ambulance. So he, we tell him his best bet is to climb into the back of this laundry truck. <laughs> and it's a decision he makes where he's like, well, I, you know, it's going, it's going to the hospital, so I better. <laughs> right. Well, remember, okay. he is an Olympic commenter. Does this come into play at all? Is there oh. some reason that he would want to go into that laundry truck? Maybe because it'll be a better story or something. Oh, wait. What's now? What's his other piece of intel? He is allergic to red wine. Okay. Uh, okay. This maybe, is maybe somebody. Maybe the reason that there's an ordinance or, or, about the ambulances is that. The mayor is convinced that the ambulance drivers are drunkards, and so uh, uh, Niles is afraid that if he gets into an ambulance, they will be drinking wine on the job or something. I mean, that's <laughs> Maybe, a stretch, but that, that's a, that's a stretch. Well, look, we still don't have our robot position. So, uh, is there any sort of a thing at the airport that would be considered a robot? Perhaps a crane arm that they used to do maintenance on a on a ceiling structure. I don't know. Would you consider that a robot? Because it doesn't have any, it doesn't have any task. It's still driven by. Yeah, I mean, there's. What, there's what, what, what defines robot? I feel like the difference between a robot and a device and just like a tool is that you, it's programmable, so that it can right. do a sequence of tasks uh, in a row, as opposed to having to do one task, be told to do a task, and then be told to do another task, and so on. Okay. 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 Um. I don't know that we have any of those. Unless you count the TSA as an unthinking machine. Haha, <laughs> got it? Commentary. Nice work. Uh, oh, I, mean, I feel like you can make an argument, but it's a, it's a high roll. Hmm. Did, did we get any specialist cards from the previous uh, murder? Oh, you're right. You did get two. Oh, excellent. Let's I'll see what we got. Good, 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 good memory. You have Shave It Off, Beardless Chris Straub. Clog any drain, pipe, or HVAC system with coarse hair. Okay, we might be able to pour some hair into this robot's <laughs> machinery. And you also have non-lethal shot. Shoot the target with a gun. But come on, we don't want a 12-year-old murderer here. Cool. So this is we a... Could swap out the robot and easily just shoot him. Just, yeah, just, just wing him. Yeah. He's, got, he's got to go to the hospital now. Yeah. I th I, yeah, you could absolutely... Uh, Attempt that if you want to swap these out. So he's he he won't die from the shot, obviously, but he can get pretty seriously wounded. Yeah. Well, he okay. just he just needs to to have an open wound to, uh, when he gets into the truck, because that's how he you know the disease vector. Uh, comes okay. So how about this? Non-lethal shot. Shoot him through the leg. He's really badly wounded. Uh, the, the, the vehicle that shows up is a laundry truck that is, he's told is going to the hospital, and in the back of the truck it made a paper is a hospital gown. Are we allowed to soak it in red wine? Because it is a laundry truck and it is filthy. 
I feel like you would have to either get the wine or justify why it's at a Italian restaurant first. <laughs> why is somebody at the hospital covered in red wine? Okay, <laughs> they don't serve it there. All right. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Um, so we still need a made of paper then. Well, the made of paper, I mean, paper. if you wanted to use it as the ordinance, I mean, I feel like you could try that. At, even though I suggested that, I feel like it's a pretty high roll. But it would be amazing if it worked because it's so stupid. Um, <laughs> or if you can think of some other way that he would get in this laundry truck that resembles an ambulance, I feel like that's going to make that ambulance roll going to be a little bit lower. <laughs> could, could we make a paper... <laughs> Uh, ambulance sign and stick it on the ambulance and, and convince him that it's, that it's sorry, <laughs> it's stick it on the laundry truck. The laundry yeah. truck. This is yeah, a on the side of the laundry truck. This this is an ambulance. I feel I feel like that could work absolutely. You also have something Canadian uh, uh, in case you, there's anything there. But uh, I feel like a paper sign that says totally an ambulance on the outside of the laundry yeah. truck would qualify. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty good. So first thing we need to do we need our. I say we need our. We need to shoot him. Yeah. We need our uh, laundry truck, because that's super important. And then I think the last thing is the paper, the sign that says it's an ambulance. Well, do, do we do we need to put the sign first so so that he's convinced? Oh, okay, okay. I think so yeah. because it's it's the uh, it's the soiled laundry gowns in the in the van that are going to actually kill him. Okay. I all right. I agree with this order. What All right. We, what are we working with here? All right. So let me let me clarify the plan. So uh, you will bring in Gordito uh, from the Christopher Hastings uh, 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 specialist cards mm -hmm. to give him a non-lethal shot right in the leg, blast his kneecap right off. Doesn't kill him, but it, a lot of blood everywhere. Uh, an ambulance is called, uh, and so the expectation is that he'll be rushed to the hospital. Then uh, what you have is a uh, a, a sign that's a very convincing uh, ambulance sign. That and we says, take our time with it. Right. You, you, you make it look really good. You oh, age yeah. it a little bit, choose the right fonts, and then you apply those to a, a, a hospital laundry van filled with soiled hospital gowns that then comes to pick him up because he thinks it's an ambulance, he gets in the ambulance, and then the infection from the soiled gowns is uh, gets into his open wound, he gets sepsis or whatever, and it eventually comes. Got it. All right? Uh, non lethal shot. Uh, so, my ratings on this are non lethal shot. How likely is it that getting a non lethal shot will make him need to go to the hospital? I think very likely. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll give you a three on that one. I think that's very straightforward. Okay. okay. How likely is it that this uh, paper sign will m convince him that this is an ambulance? Uh, I will give you maybe a five on that one because mm, ambulances right. don't typically have any kind of paper on the outside of them. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, how likely is it that he will get infected by the hospital gowns in this uh, van? So this this stage three of this plan is doing a lot of heavy lifting. It's infecting him in a fatal way uh, with the hospital gowns that it contains. So I do think it's possible, but I feel like it is a five. Okay. Okay. Three five yeah, five. Like That's true. Well, look, I, well, I, I think I think we're in, in a good position here because it, once he's bleeding, uh, we'll have a good chance of getting him to the hospital one way or another. So I, I reckon we go with it. All right. Yeah. We'll, we just might. Yeah. We'll have. To, I mean, we will end up with hospital gown opportunities at the hospital after we've right. hurt him. Right. So it's gonna really sting us if we don't land this first shot. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Three five five is the roll. Three, Chris, five, five. Uh, uh, you'll you'll go first. All right. And uh, you. So let's get that non-lethal shot with a three, and you can go. Here we go. Oh, excuse me, sir. It's a six. <laughs> All right. We we got him. All right. So now we need a five for that ambulance sign. Okay. So yes. Yeah. For that. This is a real ambulance. Uh, three, three. Not, uh, not he's not convinced. It's raining it's and, and it washed off. You have a tool slash device slash machine instead. Oh, jeez. Okay, we okay, don't. Uh, we still could get our truck, but we got to find a way, another well, way to could, get him in there. We could escort him. We could, we could, we could bundle him in into, into one of those airport little little uh, car things. That's it's, it's a machine. 
we could we could just be like, quick, quick, hop in the uh, hop in the old. Uh, and then we uh, load um, him into the into the laundry because he's so exactly. from the blood. Like a bag of oh, yeah. that actually yeah. conveys him into the laundry van. Yeah, don't even right. leave it up to him. Let's do it. What do you think? That's a five on that. All right, Nate. Okay, roll go Chris. No, it's, it's you. Nate, go for uh, it. Uh, I wrote it. All right. Uh, two. Oh no, he's, <laughs> he's, he's <laughs> struggling. He's, you trying, he's struggling. He's struggling. He's confused. confused. He fought against the shipping materials. Shipping materials. Ah, jeez. Put him in a box. Put him, put him in a box. On a stretcher. Put him. Uh... A, yeah, like a crate that says "to hospital" on it. Uh, that's <laughs> a fork. If you already have the uh, the baggage loader. That's a fork. Uh, Chris Wolf for that. Oh wait. Uh, we got a, we got a skull. Just... We got a skull. Oh, flip that coin. Flip that okay. coin. All right. And we have a stop thing. All right. Yeah, so we yes. got that one. We've just run out of time. So we we <laughs> found sport of the of the of the, of the van. But you did get him as far as I, w I would say, like to the loading zone, like the white curb. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you, uh, 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 so let me explain how, how this went down. So you got Gordito in there with his two revolvers. He, boom, 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 very, very good shot. Uh, both kneecaps, I would say, are gone. Yeah. You say, uh, this is a real ambulance with the paper sign. That didn't fool anybody. Then you said, let's get him on that baggage handling uh, conveyor belt, which did take him part of the way, <laughs> but he fell off because the blood was so slippery. You know what I like yeah. is that it says, like, the real sign says ambulance, and he's bleeding from both kneecaps, and he's like, no way. And then we bring him the conveyor, and he's like, I'm going to get on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. I'll, yes, <laughs> help me. I think the explanation there is as he loses more blood, his decision making yeah, capacity. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, and then we I give him the, uh, on the travel later. We get then we 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 get him uh, uh, a, a fair distance away, but not all the way. Finally, put him in a crate. It says to hospital, and uh, just leave him by the curb for the laundry van to pick up. However, the laundry van was stopped. By the security, didn't uh, we? Didn't even make it to that stage at all. We don't know the state, the status of the all for the van yet. Yeah, or we the laundry. To the van. Uh, you did use up, uh, but but we're out. Uh, that card is is burned now as a non lethal shot. So we have him in a crate on the white curb right now, and you have three more cards to attempt. Bleeding to heavily. That's true. We, I mean, we may as we got a lot of cards. We can we can. Uh... You have another slash device slash machine. Okay, so he's in the crate. We can make use of that. You have another real life robot. All right, this robot wants to be used real bad. This is a yeah. this is your second real life robot card, just so you know. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. have a mysterious artifact. Uh, and in your in your budget, you have shave it off. So uh, Chris Trail beard hair, something Canadian, and a second real life robot ready to be pulled in. After that, you have one card in reserve. So between these on the table, these in the budget, and one card in reserve, this target and the next. Woof. All right. We kind of are in a rough spot. We're going to have to pull this off really well so we get a few extra cards. So the question becomes, what we're looking at here, I feel like we've kind of lost the auto hospital scenario because he's now in a crate waiting yeah. to be mailed to the hospital. Right, right. We may need to find a faster way to get him there because the ambulance seems like it's out of play. <laughs> okay. Like people, like people have actually lost track of this guy. Uh, did somebody take care of it? He's just, he's yeah, just I guess, sitting there. I guess somebody takes care of it. He's he's kind of he's kind of fading in and out of consciousness. <laughs> right in a in a crate. Okay, so uh, all right, <sighs> shoot. What's what's? Can you? I I, I can't read the uh, description on the mysterious artifact. Can you read it out to me, Dave? So the examples uh, that it gives are. A crystal ball, the Ark mm -hmm. of the Covenant, the videotape uh, from the Ring. So okay. I think anything with a sort of mystical power of of some sort would qualify, as long as it's an object specifically, and okay. not like a magic spell. It's like a it's like a like a magical like a like a wishing lamp that could take him to the hospital. Yeah, I, you know, a lamp with a genie in it, I feel like would qualify. <sighs> okay, okay. It, would get, it would get us that hospital back in play. He, he probably really wants to uh, to get to the hospital too. So <laughs> he I think we, does, he's pretty right. sure that his first wish would be get me. To, well, what if he wishes? Uh, never mind. I was going to say wish, wishes to not be shot. But uh. <laughs> one thing that we uh, one thing that we skipped uh, uh, is 
the determination of whether or not he knows his death prediction. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Oh, yeah. And we have the, uh, we landed on the star, which means he does know that he is oh. fitted to die by hospital gown. So he so may he be about wishing to go to a hospital, but we don't know. He's also bleeding out. So it's hard to say. Can we, can we get a hospital gown to him? Probably somehow. I mean, if you were able to get a genie, then that opens up a lot of options for you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say. Uh, let's see. A tool device machine could also, I'm just going to throw this out there, could also be a hospital gown, like, making machine. <laughs> <laughs> and he's actually made into a hospital gown. <laughs> Uh, you could, uh, I mean, and, and I'm just going to, I mean, I'm just spitballing here. If you were to use this real-life robot as, like, let's say a factory assembly line type thing that has this precision motion, you yeah. could lift up this crate and sort of dispense with this crate, like, you could put it in a high place and then put a somehow a hospital gown, like, under it and then let it fall onto it, and the hospital gown would rip and it would fall through it into some... Chasm. Oh, I well, see. Okay. We actually okay. are using yeah. it as a blunt object. Staying, staying on that theme. What if we, what if we uh, were to actually load him onto a plane? Okay, yeah. And 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 and, and he found he, he found that he was actually in in the uh, uh, in the, the, the the cargo hold with a uh, with a uh, uh, in, in a crate with only a hospital gown, uh, and and there was something. That happens to the plane, and and he was ejected, and he had to try and use the uh, the hospital gown as a parachute, but clearly uh, <laughs> the aerodynamic qualities of a of a, a a hospital gown are inadequate. So, I feel like that works if you can get a hospital gown into the plane. Right. That's true. There's nothing about this that says that we ha we have it, unless the mysterious artifact is an enchanted hospital gown. Well, the other nice thing about this is that because he is in a crate. We know he will not die of his wounds because there is no hospital gown in the crate. But yeah. you could wait for there to be a FedEx plane carrying a shipment of hospital gowns. Eventually, sh certainly there will be one. Eventually. Look, I feel like we need to open up more doors for us with this artifact. We need to have a wishing lamp okay. with a genie that offers him a wish. Obviously, he's going to wish to go to the hospital. Because he's, he's running out of blood. I don't think he's going to wish for a million dollars. He, he could be wish. He could wish to to be to be healed. Though I feel like if he, if you were going to to have a wish, that you would not wish to go somewhere where they might be able to heal you. <laughs> I feel like that's likely, especially because he knows. He's like, I wish for a chance, like everybody else. <laughs> he may seize any opportunity to not to be healed without going to a hospital. Yeah, but that's the uh, last. What, what, what other sorts of mysterious artifact could, could there be, though? We're well, thinking, what, if, thinking what, if mythology. what if instead of a, a genie, uh, we use a monkey's paw, which is the more playful and ironic of the genies? So he would wish to be yes. healed, but he, that would actually take him to the hospital because the right. monkey's paw yeah. is kind of a jerk. That, I like it, yeah. I think that's a very strong plan. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, the genie you can reason with. The monkey's yeah. pot the, just is the first thing you say and gets it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I've seen the Simpson. As we all know. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what? And if you give him that, he's got little choice, right? He's not going to wish to not be healed. That's going to come out even worse. He's definitely going to try his best, yeah. knowing it's going to turn out poorly somehow, but not knowing exa exactly how. But I guess at that point he did has no choice but to take the risk. Yeah. Okay, so he'll wish to go to the he'll wish to be healed. He's going to okay. suddenly appear on an operating table, possibly yeah. already in the hospital gown. This is yep. not what he wanted, but well, I got to give it a shot anyway. The tool or device or machine uh, could be like a uh, like a uh, pliers to get those bullets out. <laughs> well, could it could it could it be a remote uh, surgery terminal? It could be. Okay. If we could connect it to the robot, we could have someone someone uh, using the, 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 the so so you know they have, this guy's appeared in the hospital. They know he's shot. They don't have any uh, bullet surgeons 
uh, on you know on, on on staff at the moment, so they, they have to call out. Okay, and, maybe and get a specialist. we don't know the state of these injuries, and provided that that uh, they were they were performed like expertly, the bullets mm. may have gone all the way through. So what we're dealing with is a wound that has to be cauterized, and that's right. where the laser comes into play, and that's where you can set him on fire. Got it. Okay, I like it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you absolutely could do that. And I'm speaking with 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 expertise and an understanding that this is exactly how we're going to kill him. <laughs> uh, I think I think you could use this real life robot to be a like a welding robot from like a GM assembly line that has a laser function on it. I feel like that would be within within the realm of a real life robot. Uh, one other thought that I had just to throw out there was it could be. A gown, like presumably, as a patient, he would be wearing a hospital gown. I feel like that's likely to occur. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. The doctors are going to be wearing surgical garb, but other patients in the hospital will have gowns of their own that uh, they mm -hmm. could strip on or drop something from or soil somehow. So it does not necessarily have to be a gown he is wearing. Although I feel like the laser that sets his gown on fire is very strong at this point. Okay. I think it's solid. Yeah. Okay, so we go. Uh, so we go artifact. Yep. Number one. Monkey pool. Then we go. Uh, uh, let's see. We need the robot for the laser. It's a surgical robot. Surgical. Yeah, but, but but you you but you you need to. I guess um, you've got to have someone controlling the robot with the. the oh, I know. The, but then what? The, the the tool, the machine, is the terminal that the surgeon is at. And it right. functions. We need it to okay, go wrong. Okay, got it. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I do think that if you have the robot, if you make the robot the... Okay, if you make it like a like an assembly line robot that has a welding laser on it, then yeah, then you need a surgical terminal attached to it because that's not a typical thing to find in the hospital. So right. So that, that becomes two items. Um, <laughs> yeah. And you have the something Canadian as well in your reserve, just to remind you. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> Otherwise, um, what we're looking at is we give him the monkey's paw. Yeah. You can have any wish you want, whatever your heart desires. Yeah. He says, I wish to be healed from this wound. They go, all right, we'll, we'll take you to the hospital. Monkey paw, the yeah. little finger curls up on that monkey. Yeah. And so he, yeah. uh, he goes, he's whisked to a hospital in a hospital gown, fully prepped for surgery. Um, and then, so what's the order of this? Is it the, is it the assembly line laser? Controlled by a terminal, or we get him prepped for surgery, and it turns out that the surgery is a assembly line laser. I feel like uh, I feel like the other way makes m more sense. Yeah, yeah. I think I think there's there's a laser, and then there's a m malfunction. I also like how I like how junky this ro uh, this monkey's paw is, where he's like, "Heal me, make me better," and he's teleported to a hospital in the gown and is prepared for surgery. But the ironic twist is that they don't have a surgery robot; they have an <laughs> assembly line motor vehicle assembling robot. <laughs> and he identifies. <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, cruel fate! How how could you do this to me? I should have learned." <laughs> yeah. All right, so you're gonna so he appears on the on the uh, on the operating table. He's got the assembly line robot ready there with the laser, and then we have the surgeons who say, well, we all, all we have to do, we have to control this somehow. Right. We're going to, we're going to use this terminal, but uh, what ends up happening, because it is a terminal controlled by our, uh, our, our gift cards, is that it ends up lighting his hospital gown that he is already wearing on fire, and he burns to death. Right. Is that the Yeah, un unless... Uh uh, hospital gown is a little known uh, slang term for a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a tougher role. <laughs> this or, is like a guy. This guy they named me hospital this, gown. This, this hospital gown over here and knock the guy off. <laughs> they call me hospital gown because I put people in them. <laughs> <laughs> so you so you injure them? I don't. <laughs> you don't even. This is my brother's cement shoes. Yeah. <laughs> My dad's name was uh, was was Body Bag, so <laughs> I had to pick something that I was like Body Bag Junior. <laughs> Less lethal. This is a hospital gown. I, All right, they, they well, call so me how Sheets. Likely how likely is it that the monkey's paw will make him? He will number one wish 
for the uh, hospital uh, to, to be healed, and then it will take him to the hospital. I feel like um, we're sort of presuming that he makes his wish, but we we know how a monkey's paw works. So I feel like this yeah. is four for that one. Okay. How likely is it that we can have this assembly line robot that is pressed into service for surgery? Uh, I feel like that's less likely because it's clearly the wrong tool for the job. That's yeah. Just wild. Uh, how likely is it that we can control it with our computer terminal? I think fairly likely if we have the card for it, so I'm going to call that a four. So four, five, okay. four. Yeah. All right, four, five, four, five. <sighs> All right, so Nate, we're going to start with you. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna so, let you know in advance. You guys have one card left. So if oh. you, uh, if you need if you burn more than one card in the course of this uh, uh, in the in the course of this, then what's gonna happen? Like if, if if you get this one and it's already in play, I'm gonna start pulling from your budget uh, the subsequent cards. Can can we yeah can we use the the Canadian and the other one? Uh, you absolutely can. Yeah. If you want to swap okay. those out at any time, uh, you are welcome to. So, okay. All right. So, and just to, again to remind you, the cards that you have in your budget are something Canadian, another okay. real life robot. But, but of course, you cannot get the same exact item twice or okay. attempt the same item twice. Uh, yeah. And uh, shave it off, uh, clog any drain pipe or HVAC system. Of course. There. Okay. Uh, so Nate, we'll have okay. you, we'll have you start yeah. the roll uh, again. Uh, five four the roll. So we're looking for a four. Looking yes. For a four. Ready? Monkey paw. Monkey paw. Go. All right. Go. Uh, it's a, it's a skull. It's a skull. Right. So uh, flipping. Right. Hang on. Flip the coin. Yes. yes. We got that paw. Yes. You got yeah, that skull. All right. Four. So we need a five on that on that robot. All right. Here we go. Here okay. we go. Assembly arm robot. That's ah, a two. It's a two. All right. Ah, no robot. Okay. Instead, you have an animal. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, can we reorder? Can we reorder? Yes, you can. Okay. Uh, a bloke goes. All right. So uh, the robot's out of order. Here's my welding torch. So let's put the to the tool in in, in front. So the a bloke just runs in with a welding torch. What do you reckon? Okay. Uh, yeah. You know that's a four on that one. Four. There right. we go. Yes, I have four. You got that. All, all right. right. So now you have an animal. What do you do now? You're burning him. He's burning okay. to death. But you have an animal. Um, <laughs> a, a bird flies in uh, and and distracts the uh, <laughs> the, the doctor. <laughs> so nobody um, comes into the room. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have the four. Roll for. I, I, all, right. all right. We've got another skull. Hang on. All right. That's, That's, a, point. <laughs> That's a no. Uh, I can okay. on the animal. Canadian, can we can we can we bring back the caribou? Bring back the caribou. Okay, Just caribou. To charge through another four. That's another I'm four. Rolling for that one. It's uh, four. It's four to you. Yes. Yeah, we got him. We got him. All right, you got that one. Uh, All right, so let's uh, let's roll again, and you get uh, comfort uh, the target's next of kin using okay. furniture. Using furniture or a, 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 a chaise uh, lounge chair that we they can enjoy. That's a five. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, I get three. I didn't get it. <laughs> all right, so we're out of time on that one. Uh, all right, so but he's we, dead. He's dead. I, I, I like the next you of kin. The next of kin are like, uh, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. You want to lie down on this uh, on this pool no, chair? This no, no, it's not. What I want. It's I absolutely know. not what I want. It's okay. not make me feel better. <laughs> I want my son back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me explain what happened to you. Uh, he so was going to get gold. Yeah. <laughs> so the, uh, the, gave him the monkey's paw. He did just like you expected. He said, I want to be alive. I want to be healed. So they take him to the hospital, show up with a hospital gown. Um, you, uh, you said, all right, well, there's this assembly line robot that's going to attempt to do the surgery. Somebody said, no, we cannot have this. It's it not doesn't, safe. It does not have the dexterity to do surgery is the problem. This laser is dangerous. Somebody identified this threat. So uh, you did not get that one, but instead you just said welding torch. You just ran into the operating room, violating every rule. Just yeah, blazing. He's bleeding. He's bleeding out. It did work. It did alight his hospital gown. He's burning to death now. People will come running with fire extinguishers to save him. So first you send a bird to try and distract them, but the bird cannot <laughs> distract them from their life saving duties. They are life savers by fashion. <laughs> There's a bird in here, but I'm gonna file it at the deepest back. I don't care about this. Bird. You sent but then you sent in the caribou. The caribou indeed 
gallop through. That caused havoc. That stirred him up. <laughs> we were not able to uh, prevent his uh, from burning to death before the caribou uh, uh, was able to, to to storm out. So that you burned up. Truck, you, you burned up a bunch of cards. Uh, you are left with two only. <coughs> No, so here's the thing. Typically, this is this is not tenable because you need three. So because this is a special circumstance, I will extend you a third card, but you have no backups in okay. this game because we did not get any bonuses, and we are down, down to zero budget. In the interest of seeing Jeff Dodge murdered, I will give you an extension on your budget, but it is one card only. The chief is cruel but fair. Get it. So this is incumbent upon you to come up with the best plan possible. How's he going to die? Uh, he is attracted to bees. He hates the feel of steam. He is currently in an almond factory. Okay. The cards you have are shave it off with coarse hair, another real-life robot, and a specific walrus. <laughs> could, wow, this is easy. Could you read the example of walruses? Walrus. The example yeah. walruses are an amorous walrus, a newborn walrus, a rabid walrus. So basically, it's adjective walrus. Okay. Of some sort. Okay. Okay. He will die by. <laughs> Underwater, <laughs> but it's smiling. Fine. Ah, okay, okay. So he has to die pleased. Okay, well, I imagine... In some sort of rigor mortis, you know, like seizing the muscle situation. Okay, okay, so I would imagine that at the almond factory, they, like, have a, a blanching tank. So we could probably right. submerge him. We don't have to bring that in. Yeah. We could have a, we could have a fun walrus hanging out in the tank. Maybe he wants we to could, have fun with a walrus. A How about a hungry walrus? Hmm. Okay. So, but but that wouldn't make me smile if I was if I was underwater. <laughs> what about a playful walrus so that he can he, he can look out and it's like it's capering over there and he's like, well, I'm drowning, but it's yeah, okay. I like it. I'm having a good time. And I got almonds floating around me to eat as I die. <laughs> it's not a bad death. It's an okay <laughs> death. As deaths go. <laughs> okay. So we have. I don't even think we have the walrus, but so we have. We know we have a a, a body of water in which to put him. Uh, maybe where they wash the almonds or where they cook the almonds. Maybe washing yeah. is preferable. The robot, I imagine, is an assembly. Uh, maybe a. Uh, uh, how do those assembly lines work? Well, you the, cannot have an automotive assembly line robot because we've already had one in the prior round. Could it? Right. Could it be like an almond sorter? Like it's like a conveyor belt that kind of sorts them into uh, into you know, shapes or sizes or something. I feel that's, like that's plausible. Okay, okay, I'll go there. Uh, and then what? How could we? What could we do with this hair? <laughs> <laughs> These are. This is all good stuff, but we do have to fit this hair in there somewhere. <laughs> um. Maybe he's, we, we, maybe he's smiling because he solved the almond factory's problem. Nobody, no wonder these almonds aren't being produced properly. There's a hair in this system. <laughs> we, we, could, we, could, we could cause a flood. We could flood the factory somehow. Oh, I see. Maybe we clog the drains with hair. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> great, like the, the water level rises past this almond vat just to right. cover the entire factory floor. Right, I'm forgetting. I'm yeah. forgetting what. Uh, okay, yeah, and then, and then so he'll drown. He's, he's gonna die. He's gonna drown. Yeah. But and the walrus though will be like a will be like a circus walrus that's that's having a good time and having a lot of fun. I don't remember which um which um ancient Roman uh philosopher died of laughing because he saw a yeah. donkey eating figs. That's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> that was the legend. I'll have to look it up. But so, he died laughing because he saw a donkey eating a fig. <laughs> so I think we can kill him in a in a in a, a submerged almond factory full of hair <laughs> and looking at a walrus. <laughs> we'll just we'll just strike him and then he'll he'll just drown. 
just so absurd okay. that he he can't help but he but, can't but, help but laugh. He's like, he's I can't believe I can't believe this is my life. I can't believe this is my death. <laughs> All right. So okay, okay. So we've got we've got uh, some a clog which floods the factory. We've got a comical walrus. What about the robot? And a the robot. robot. Oh yeah, that's well, a good robot is the assembly line sort of conveyor belt. Yeah, but it doesn't really have any action with it. With yeah, yeah. Well, maybe maybe it's the maybe the uh, it's the conveyor that gets the air into the drain in the first place. So we can't could, could have. It, could it be a loader? Could it be like a loader, like the aliens or something? It, oh, yeah, see. it absolutely could be. Well, I mean, that's not a real life robot. Like, it couldn't be like yeah. a like from the movie. It's not a real life robot. But uh, one other suggestion I will give you is, you can clog the drains with hair. Right. Mm. And then you can get that walrus like capering about, having a good time, charming, real and fun. If you want to make this like a like a sorting conveyor of some sort, as a as a third sort of step, it just brings that walrus closer to him. So it's just like <laughs> ever more joyful. <laughs> as he drowns, as he drowns, like that's what makes that grin like climb on his face. Right. It's a very zen thing. It's like it's like the guy hanging from the cliff, and then he as he, and as he falls, he eats a strawberry, and it's the best tasting one because he knows he's about to die. He's like, I'm gonna right. drown. Yeah. I might as well be the checking walrus, out this the walrus. walrus. The walrus coming on the conveyor is the difference between watching a walrus and watching a walrus and smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought this would be the way? I think you will find that in like SeaWorld's like employee manual. <laughs> Like a conveyor belt can make all the difference when it, <laughs> when it comes to our customers' happiness. Uh, okay, how do we feel about that? <laughs> I, I I feel like we're reaching a little, uh, but I haven't got anything better. At any stage, if we fail, we've blown it. So if we don't get the yeah. hair, nothing's so going we, off the rails. Yeah, we we need some really plausible sort of. Uh, uh, well, you know, aside from the walrus, of course. This um, game is not about plausibility. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, well, we what, may have what to get points for humor. <laughs> what other types of robot could we could we use? Because um, I'm thinking, because he's, he's got to be drowning as well, though. So, so what what's to stop you? You're watching a walrus. Why would you not float? Um, why would you not come up? Yeah, yeah. So what's what's holding you beneath the water? Hmm. I, the only thing I could think of that is uh, that, but he doesn't need this necessarily to smile. But you know that uh, that big dog military robot, the one that has four legs and can carry a pack and is and yep. can move on any terrain and walks ridiculously. Terrifying. That's not going to work. <laughs> Why is it in an almond factory? Well, it's just, maybe <laughs> maybe they brought it to sniff out the bees. <laughs> That's true. Maybe it's doing research, like they're like it's a paramilitary almond operation. I mean, you that that is a real thing. I've seen a video of it. So you can actually put you can put that in the situation if it is helpful to you. It's weaponized nut allergies. <laughs> Maybe uh, I feel like it, it 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 hews too closely to a medical robot. But they bring that thing in there to actually get him out of the drowning scenario. Hmm. But is it like slipping around and it's so hilarious that it's like, look at that thing. It think it like it, it's a very uh, lifelike movement, but it's comical in that way. All right, here's my recommendation for the robot. I think I like the loader idea, but it's not like yeah. a. It doesn't. It's not self moving around, but it does take almonds from this bin, moves them over, and dumps them onto the conveyor belt. It's so okay. we so we sh so we takes that we takes that hairs. <laughs> We stick uh -huh. it. We stick it where one of those raw almond bags would go. It it picks that up instead, as, assuming that it doesn't notice any difference and and like smash the bag because it's just yeah. hair. It's not almonds. And then dumps it into the uh, vat where they're to be boiled. That clogs yeah. it. Then we uh, send in the walrus as he drowns. <laughs> so the order is: we need the bag of hair. We need that yeah. loading robot to not uh, drop the bag. We need to convey yep. it into the pot, and yep. then we have, and then we bring in the walrus as the piece de resistance. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Uh, so yep. I will give you guys a little bonus too because uh, you guys are being such good assassins. Uh, there's a few more specialist cards. 
if you burn through these gift cards with any failed rolls, I will deal you a specialist card to replace it. But we're still under okay. the limit. Okay, uh, okay. So it's a secret until we get to that point. Right. All right. Uh, right. Okay. So, so let, me, let me clarify the plan as, as I understand it. You get a bag of Chris's beard hair. Uh, you, the, you have the, uh, the loading robot uh, dump it into the almond blanching vat, which will clog it, which we know it will because it's designed to. Yeah. I, I've, I live with it. it. My showers are ruined. How? Uh, well, <laughs> explain to me how Jeff is in the vat. Is it because the the vat? It's, it's a mascot. He's, he's a mascot. Uh, no, no. Jeff. Home. Jeff is 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 is. Uh, he can't help but be near it. The vat is there. The hair clogs it, and it just starts to fill and the entire factory with water. Yeah, the whole room. There's no escaping it. Right. He can't get yeah. away. Okay. So. Um, this is a high. Throughput almond factory. They got to get a lot of fresh water in there. A lot of almonds are coming out, so the water is going to rise very fast. Okay, so we got the uh, we got the beard hair. We got the robot putting the beard hair into the uh, into the actual uh, into vat. that vat. And we got the, we got the capering walrus as right. the, as the walrus that will be the the smiling element. Even the rescuers above on the catwalks who are working there are too distracted by the joyful walrus, <laughs> who's, that'll, that'll who, be, who by be. the way, is unbothered by the boiling almond water. <laughs> That's right. He's been in there a while. It was, it was cold when he got in, so, you know. <laughs> That's true. So how do you feel about this, Chief? All right. Um, how likely is it that this... Uh, you know, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to change the order of this because of the way that these questions are phrased. How likely is it that this uh, loading robot would move the beard hair instead of the uh, the almond? I think it's neither likely nor unlikely. I think it's fine. So I'll give you a straight four on that one. Okay. How likely is it that the thing will clog the HVAC or it will clog the drains to overflow sufficiently overflow to fill the whole factory? Um, it is designed to clog, but the whole factory is a very large uh, area. Mm -hmm. So it would have been a three because it's designed to do that specifically, but because of the scale of the factory, also a four. So we're yeah. at a four and a four. That's tough. How likely is it that this will then catch him in his, like, it will rise to, <clears throat> to drown him, and he will smile at the capering walrus. It's the hardest part. He's going to be smiling. Uh, this, this has got to be a six, right? Cause well, I, I really like the look of it. Like, I really want this to happen. I really want this mental picture of this capering walrus as just the almonds just float to the, like, above his eye it's, level. He's just got this, he's got this just insane grin on his face as he watches yeah. the walrus. And he just, just, just wants it because he knows, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to sort of, I'm going to flip this coin here. To show that he knows how he's going to die, so <laughs> he knows this is where the smile comes in. If he didn't, I feel like he would be more fearful. But right. since he does, I feel like he knows this is it. He knows this is the moment, he's, he's and that's what makes this, it yeah. not as as difficult as it otherwise would be. So he's like, "Oh, I get it now." Exactly. Exactly. He has that moment of realization of like, "Oh, okay, this is it. This okay. is how." Uh, and for right. that reason, instead of a five, it's a four. So this is uh, four's down the line. so it's fours all across the board. By the way, I, I, David, I'm realizing that this game we've never talked about this, but the chief mechanism of parceling out points or deciding the difficulty, but then wanting to see it succeed, it's a lot like it's a lot like Shark Tank or any of those shows where it's like, you come to me with your plan, I'm going to tell you how feasible it is. You know what though? It's yeah. dumb, but I like your attitude, and I'm going to put in a hundred thousand of my own money. <laughs> like this is that's the mechanism. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Because I, you know, as the person sort of uh, assigning the gift cards, I can call up AAA cell phone unlocking and walruses who sells these walruses and say, make sure to give him the best because I want a few. Right. Ones. I know it, they got the deck stacked against them, but I want your funniest walrus. <laughs> <laughs> I want your funniest. I want your funniest, most heat tolerant walrus. <laughs> All right, boards down the line. Uh, any failures will will get a specialist card uh, dealt to them as a replacement uh, to see if we can kill Jeff Dodge. We're right up to the wire with this murder. If we okay. get the kill and we have time left on the clock, 
we will try to do uh, some aftermath actions just to see how well we do. And okay. uh, get my die at the ready for that. Uh, all right, just so uh, Chris, we'll have you start with the roll. One, one, one last thing before we before we uh, we start yes. the timer. Uh, Chris, uh, don't forget that he is uh, has an aversion to steam, so if we can use that to keep him underwater, if we if we can't get the walrus to uh, distract him enough. I see. So, so, so in order to avoid the steam rising at the level of water above the water line, it's, it's he swim down, stays yeah. beneath the water. Yeah, <laughs> and he yeah. drowns. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that, I will. That is a good point. Definitely keep that in mind. Okay, I will. Yeah. I will remember that when things go awry. Right. Ready? Okay. So we got to beat falls, a falls. Falls all the way. Chris, you ready? Yeah. And begin. All right, robot. What We're do you for the robot. Today? I got a four. All right. We need a four for the loading robot. Now we need a four for the hair on Nate. Nate. All right. So it's hair. fairly fast flow, and uh, it's a five. It's uh, it's, it's a five. We got that. So it's... we need that funny walrus, Chris. Give me a four. All right. All right. Uh, he's loading them in. Oh, I got a one. I got a one. I got a oh. coin. Flip the coin. It's a ah, It's a yes. It's a yes. We got it. Oh, right. no. It's pulled off in the nick of time. Oh, okay. All right. You gotta flee the scene using okay. some furniture. Nate, you roll that one. Uh, uh, we're going to flip the table upside down and float out. Uh, that's, a, that's a four. Uh, I got a two. All right, but you did not get that one. <laughs> um, we're going to uh, comfort the target's next of kin uh, using stuff your mother warned you about. So soothing cigarettes. Most <laughs> <laughs> uh, one in his honor. Five. That's a five. It's a five. It's a five. I got a five. <laughs> All right, you got it. Uh, and at the six, cater the target's wake uh, using ooh, uh, seafood, of course. Uh, well, almond. Almond. Seafood and almonds. No, it's, it's things that don't exist. Things that don't exist. Oh, things that don't exist. Um, <laughs> seafood flavored almonds. Uh, okay, yeah, that's a that's a four. That doesn't exist. <laughs> Five. Yeah. All right, you got that one. Away. All right, guys. Now you need to uh, destroy the evidence using sports equipment. <laughs> Uh, okay. We, can what's we, the evidence? Can we archery everything <coughs> to oblivion? That's a six. Roll a six for me. All right, here we go. That's that's a one. <laughs> nah, it didn't work out. It didn't work out. All right. Uh, if you had if you had gotten that third uh, uh, specialist a bonus uh, point, that would have given you enough to try one more kill. But you didn't. However, what you did do was you you cleaned out Jeff Dodge. Uh, this is exactly how it happened. Just like you planned it, it worked out. Um, so you got the assembly line, uh, you got that the loading robot, grab that bag of hair, right. put it in that blanching tank. That that hair just, it sort of fluffed up with it the moisture, expanded. into the ducting system. Yeah. Terrifying, terrible. <laughs> Smelled bad because of the heat. And uh, like it, Melting it, hair and almonds. <laughs> The which, water is level you know, which is how you know there's arsenic in your food, by the way. <laughs> it's, it smells like burning hair and almonds. Oh, there you go. Uh, the, uh, uh, cyanide is almonds, I think? <laughs> cyanide, yeah. Uh, so that water level just kept rising, kept rising, kept rising, kept rising, kept rising. It, it, Jeff knows that this is coming. He's like, underwater is part of this. He's like, but I'm not smiling. This is a terrifying situation. This is but awful. This can be how I die. Because there's no reason to smile in this terrible situation. Then comes the capering walrus. Triple A to the rescue. <laughs> this guy, this walrus is hilarious. <laughs> there is no. He's got a he's got a, like a beach ball in his nose. He's just <laughs> right. He's doing all of it. He's doing all of the classic walrus stunts. To be honest, and we could have. Go ahead. I was going to say, to be honest, we could have gotten him, like, provided that we waited until right next to the moment of drowning before we send in the walrus. He's going to see that walrus just in those last moments, and none of these other triggers that are going off. The sense of danger is gone. He's accepted his fate. And then that walrus comes in, and he just goes, nah. just a little bit of sm just a little smile. <laughs> just, just a smirk. The irony. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe even just, just the just... identification of a walrus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the small comforts. Yeah, when the know, walrus drops the ball or something. He's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I really like about this is the the sort of mental picture of him with the water level just rising over his eyes. He doesn't even blink. There's almonds floating on the surface of the water. 
Yeah. And we're just on the, this tight shot on his face, and then it's just <laughs> cut to black. <laughs> right, just the just <laughs> That's all he needs. Uh, and then he knew this was it. He didn't think it was it because he wasn't smiling, but then that walrus... You can't help but smile. You can't help but was, identify that this is what the you know, this is what the machine meant. You know, Colonel Happy the Uh Yeah, and it's a sort of thing. I feel like this is a real testament to the sort of trickiness of the machine because underwater with smiling could mean a lot of things. And if you were to try yeah. and predict it, it's unlikely that you would land on laughing at the walrus in an almond factory. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, 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 I like the uh, the catering at the wake because see what what, what happened afterwards is once they drained the factory. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, Colonel Happy uh, also also uh, passed away. Right. Um, you know, and, he, and, he, and the almonds yeah. actually they cooked their walrus meat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they so they marinated in walrus, uh, uh, hence the uh, the seafood flavor. <laughs> so these are and these were packaged and sold as Jeff Dodge Memorial Limited Edition Walrus flavored almonds. I feel exactly. like this is like, a you know, scornful situation where it's like a real breakthrough discovery happened completely by accident, but this is now a huge category. Right. Oh People yeah, and, and nut products. Yeah, yeah. Ten percent of the proceeds went to his uh, his family as well. So right. Is the charity of choice. <laughs> <laughs> this is. is uh, I mean, a lot of people are allergic to nuts. A lot of people are allergic to seafood. This hits that Venn diagram of people who are allergic to neither. So it's right. a new product that it goes deep. Oh, I was going to say yeah. that the 10% of the of funds go to uh, go to drain research. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure this never happens again. <laughs> you know, it's a real shame how uh, it takes a tragedy like this to really wake up the drain community. <laughs> <laughs> like, like to make sure we need money to make sure this never happens again. Ah, oh, here's five dollars. We've done it. I don't think this will ever happen ever it's, again. It's, it's, he's a he's a, he's a, he's a very It solves the problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so, uh, they need to install filters for every every blanching machine across right. the country, which is like three. <laughs> right. Like how many almond factories really are there at this scale? Like, it's probably like three commercial almondries in the entire country. <laughs> yeah. That's a plus. I can't believe we actually pulled that one off. You guys pulled it off by the, by the skin of your teeth. You guys are brilliant, uh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Even with even with the specialist safeguards, we didn't actually need them. Didn't yeah. yeah. We managed to yeah. blow through. Yeah, flawless. Uh, so we've got the uh, uh, the the death cards and the intel slips here. As I mentioned before, these are written by Chris and myself. Uh, uh, two of each uh, from a Chris and by me. So Nate, I'm going to put these in the mail to you. These will be your souvenirs of our uh, our oh, session today. Uh, since you're so kind to to, to to back the uh, Kickstarter and to support us with that. Um, I really appreciate uh, all your great murders. Both of you. <laughs> I think that they're like fulfillments of fate. They're not actually murders. Somebody does right. die, but we just we're just giving it a nudge. <laughs> yeah, it's completely incidental. If anybody were to die, it's it's not uh, due to any action on our part, but rather uh, inaction on the part of anybody that could have stopped it. <laughs> exactly. That's right. The so real someone could have you know just reminded him to to, to swim or you know inhale or something. Yeah, that's true. He could have tread. Well, no, the steam kept him down. <laughs> true. Uh, so, uh, Machine of Death, the game of creative assassination, uh, is available now. You can check it out at machineofdeath.net slash GCA for game of creative assassination. Uh, uh, Chris and Nate, thank you very much for joining us in this international session of Machine of Death. Uh, we hope you enjoyed your homicides, and uh, we'll, we'll check in with you guys later on. Yeah. See you guys. Uh, catch you later.